Uh, you're welcome to get up and walk around. We won't be offended. Uh, if, if Jeff gets boring, you can stand up and go for a tour of the factory on your own and come back. Um, that's an emergency fire door. Uh, I'm an old fireman, and so that's open. There's also fire exit through that door, and of course here, so we got three exits out of here. Um, never expect to have to use them, but it's good to know where things are. Uh, bathrooms are right there. Uh, there is a water cooler um, right in the kitchen there, and there's ice in the uh, refrigerator freezer. Uh, what else am I missing? Uh, oh, uh, it's, it's real important. Um, when we're talking about a subject, if you have a question and you wait until uh, I stop talking, I'll never stop talking. So raise your hand, I'll nod and acknowledge you, and I'll come back to you. If, if I go long, I have a lot to say today. Uh, if I go long on a subject, Jeff's going to roll his eyes and tell me to move it along. If you go long on a subject, we're going to roll our eyes and tell you to move it along too, yeah. because we got to keep things rolling. Um, so don't, don't be offended if we say, you know, move it. <laughs> you know? Or uh, I yelled to Mike, cut the tape. She's going long. He's going long. Uh, so that's about it, and uh, are you guys ready? Okay, your mic, there we go, the VOG's working. So good morning, my name's Steve Thompson, I'm uh, President and Chairman of Emory Thompson Machine. We're a 114 year old corporation that invented the mechanized ice cream machine back in uh, 1903, patented it in 1906. And we've been building our Made in the USA machines ever since then. We were in the Bronx, New York, two blocks of Yankee Stadium for 100 years. And I started in the business when I was 16, bending copper tubing. While all my friends were off uh, being lifeguards and teaching sailing and all sorts of good stuff like that, I was in the South Bronx bending copper tubing. So I did learn the business uh, pretty well, and, and I'm in it because I absolutely love it. It's, it's a, it's a great business. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a very prosperous business for a lot of reasons, even more so now today that we'll get into. And um, I'm going to spend a lot of time, uh, or a little bit longer time this morning, talking about uh, the most profitable product in the world, which is Italian ice, and the most profitable flavor, lemon ice. I'm going to break it down for you for cost. Uh, if you've watched our uh, 350 videos, which will be 356 by the end of today, uh, you'll see that Jeff and I often don't agree on anything. And uh, he and I'll, I'll quibble over the price of uh, a pound of sugar uh, over a few pennies, and he'll say cost doesn't matter. Well, unfortunately, after doing the math all weekend and checking it and rechecking it and running it by Jeff, it turns out he's right. And uh, cost doesn't matter because way do you see the profit margins? So buy on the good sugar. <laughs> yeah, well, in my thing, I actually did use a quality sugar. Do I okay. mention it? No, I don't. But I used a, uh, I bought a 25-pound bag of a Domino's, uh, crystal something, diamond crystal. <laughs> Rolls off your tongue, right? Yeah. Sugar, diamond, yeah. crystal. Yeah, here we go. So anyway, <laughs> as you can see, it's going to go like this all day. So we're going to start with making uh, what I call is my secret lemon ice formula. And uh, all the formulas, everything at our website, if you're watching on YouTube, you're welcome to it all. Uh, even if you don't buy a machine from me, which would be a little bit insane, uh, you're welcome to my formulas, uh, my sources, everything. I love to see people get into business, and if you didn't buy a machine from us, you will. Uh, but the main thing is we are having a lot of fun putting people into business, and we're talking making millionaires. Uh, you've probably heard that Jeff started uh, quite a number of years ago in the back row of our classroom here and uh, sat back there and tasted my products, which were fantastic, and said, you know, if this guy can make this, I can make much, much better. And here he is. He's been through, what, three renovations of the store? Yeah. It's now, what, 47,000 square feet? Just under. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and he's got uh, just a, a fantastic business uh, just north of here in Fruit Loop, Florida. Look it up on the map. You should go visit it. It's great. So we'll get started. I'm going to start by handing out the breakdown of the cost uh, while I break down the machine. So I'll give this to you, and you pass. Uh, just hand them down. Uh, I'm going to use the CB350 countertop for this. That's this little baby. This makes uh, six quarts, six to seven quarts uh, in the freezing time. 
Uh, ice cream and gelatos, anything dairy takes about eight minutes. Anything that's sugar and water with a higher sugar content uh, will take about 14 minutes. So we're going to start with the lemon ice. And the first thing I've done is I've gotten some water and my sanitizer. Do you see? There it is. Um, sanitizers are chlorine-based, and their purpose is to kill bacteria. And so we're going to pour, and we'll break the machine down later and show it to you. Uh, but this is to uh, kill uh, off any bacteria. And so I'm going to run that through the machine. Can you do that before every batch? Uh, I don't do it before every batch. I do it at the start of the day. And if I plan my production right, as long as I don't open this door and put my hands in there, I don't have to re-sanitize. If I break for lunch for 20 minutes, no problem. If I take a two-hour lunch, like Jeff is used to, uh, I would re-sanitize. The barrel is so heavily insulated. Now, we sanitize when? At the end of the day. At the end of the day. Yes. So that the next day we walk right in, we're ready to roll. Uh, technically, that would be okay, but in reality, what if you only make ice cream once a week? Uh, you're not going to rely on a machine that was sanitized last week. Health departments argue about this all the time. Do you sanitize at the end of the day, the beginning of the day? They will always say the beginning of the day, but then some of them say, oh, you got to sanitize at night. And I'm going, what for? But I've had so many run-ins with health departments, and I've learned one thing, that you cannot beat City Hall, so don't even try. You know, you, you can't, whatever the health inspector says, if he wants it at the end of the day, that's fine. Make sure the gate's closed, because the last thing you may have done is had the gate open from last night, air drying out, and it all goes over the, all over the floor, and you're going, why is this damn machine leaking? Emery Thompson, I hate Emery Thompson. Well, it's because he left the gate open. Oh, we did that yesterday. Susie did that yesterday, right? Right, Susie? Come on, face up. Right? Poured it in the top, came shooting out the bottom. <laughs> Now, we're only using water and sanitizer, so there's nothing freezing in here. Um, if this was Italian ice, there'd be sugar in there, and that's actually what is freezing and turning into a product. So I'm going to turn on the infinite overrun control. I'm just going to hit a homemade for highest speed and start. And uh, I am not turning on refrigeration because it would turn into a giant ice cube. Uh, when we do pull ice cream and ices out of all these machines today, yes? No, I'm just listening. Oh, yeah, when you, when we, I'm fascinated. When we pull the ice cream and ices out of the machine today, we are going to turn off the refrigeration so it doesn't get any colder. And Jeff will tell you a story about uh, at his class, which was the last two days, uh, someone left the refrigeration on. Shame on them. We know who you are. Um, and froze up the machine. Uh, so when the ice cream's ready, the ices are ready, the refrigeration goes off, this stays spinning. But the product is thick, it's heavy, it's ice cream, it's ices. It's going to flow out very fast. This is just water. If I open this gate now, and I'm, I'll, you'll see me standing here because it's gonna be like the Shamu the whale, the front row is gonna get soaked so, because water's so loose. So I'm gonna turn it off and drain that out. And the barrel has a slight pitch to it so that even when the machine's level, there's a slight pitch, it's going to drain all the water out. Um, if you read and follow the directions with the sanitizer, no additional rinse is necessary. But I'm not the type to read and follow directions. That's why all my ice creams are different. Um, Difference is so a good word for it. It's not a good, yeah, and it's not a good thing. We want consistency. Uh, so I'm going to run through a rinse just real quick. I have had health departments tell me that by running a rinse through here, I've now contaminated the machine with water. And I get into my New York attitude and say, well, listen, pal, what do you think Italian ice is made out of? It's tap water. Well, I didn't win that argument either, so. Well, but really, they're right, you know. They the, are right. But the last, that's why we do it at night, so that there's no hint of Clorox smell through the machine. When you do it in the morning, that might be the case. Well, but the residue would still be there. <laughs> Just do it. And technically, you're supposed to take the machine, the dasher out and put it on the t desk at night. So on the desk, on the table. So if you know Ebola starts flying through the air overnight, 
you'd have a contaminated machine anyway. And there's no real set time on this. The health department will tell you they want it to go for a minute, minute and a half. Remember, I'm turning it off. Now, we're good to go. We can go 18, 20, 24 hours nonstop as long as we don't open the machine up. Uh, we just go straight through and make ice cream all day, all night. Like I do. Which the machine is capable of. Okay. So I'm just going to set that aside. And my formula calls for three and a half pounds of cane sugar. So let me measure that. You took my container. Oh, excuse me. I was zesting your lemons. Oh, all right. Thank you. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Is that better? Is that a better way to do it? Have, why don't you tell me the first lemon? I'm on the last lemon. <laughs> so put this in here. Hold it like this. Yeah. And then. Yeah. And then you. Yeah. At like a 45 degree angle. Yep. And then bring your uh, left hand on top. Left hand. <laughs> We're doing the hokey hand, turn. My left hand on <laughs> Do top. Do the hokey pokey and turn yeah, yourself not about. Like this. Not like this. Like this. And then. Uh, you want, come up, come up and show us. Come on, please. Let's let's get this live demonstration. For those of you who couldn't hear what was going on, we're zesting. How to zest a lemon? Here, come over here. Come on, zest away. I want to learn this too. Can you squeeze? Uh, can you zoom in on that? If you have like your cutting board, a cutting board coming out here, then you. Go you're, ahead, you're zest away. Well, you need a cutting board. Zest away on the counter here. Floor. I just cleaned this counter. Zest away. <coughs> Turn it over. You getting any zest? Yeah. Turn the... the I don't yeah. see any zest. Okay, a little bit more muscle. <laughs> and, a better, and a better zester. Not, not a like better this. zester. Not like this. Okay. <laughs> That's what you do. That's called a file. I got... I got... Better, better grader. <laughs> Thank you very much. We need a better zester. As I, I, we need a bigger zester. I, I got for Christmas a uh, cooking glove. It's made out of steel because I kept you know, lopping off the, fing the fingers cutting onions. And I think that would be perfect here because if you do this enough, you're going to just take the tops of your knuckles off. And that's painful. Why am I doing it? Uh, so that I don't risk that. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll go back to my method for the last lemon here. <coughs> Okay, so I need sugar. I can't call you ponytail today. You did that on purpose, right? All right, this is going to call for three and a half pounds of cane sugar. So while he's getting the sugar ready, a little entertainment, right? Yes. Whoa, wait a minute. Come on, pick it. Don't kick it to me, pick it up. They're going in, yay. They're going in your lemon ice, not mine. And the great thing is, this is gonna be in your ices. <laughs> okay, so I've got my three and a half pounds of sugar, and if you're following along, seven quarts of water. Is this that quality sugar? <laughs> it's all quality. I'm looking for something to put seven quarts of water in. Here, use the eight quart thing right here. That works. Thank you. Now, one question that comes up is, is Italian ice like, um, like, doing bagels and pizza. Everybody knows you can't make a decent pizza or a bagel unless you're in New York City because it's the water. We have a fabulous filtration system that starts up at the Kensico Dam. And it's got this big wire mesh and it catches all the bodies that uh, have been thrown into the lake and then it goes down there and continues on being filtered down. Um, it's not really true for Italian ice with a little bit of exception. You can make Italian ice anywhere. And, Here's part of my theory about it. If you're selling Italian ice here in Brooksville, Florida, which has never seen a tourist in its life, uh, or Miami, Florida, which is, you know, all New Yorkers, uh, up here, everyone is used to the water. It's very hard. It has a lot of minerals in it. But they grew up on it. 
So when they drink the water, it's delicious. Uh, when we make the Italian ice on it, it's delicious. But if you use that same water down in Miami, which is also very hard with a lot of minerals, it's going to affect the taste of the Italian ice because everybody's from New York or the Northeast where the water is completely different. And so in that case, I use a, uh, a Culligan water softener or a reverse osmosis system to clean up the water a little bit. But for the most part, wherever you are in the world or the country, you're not going to need to clean up the water because it's what all your customers are used to drinking anyway. So it's, it's not going to matter. So if you look at our costs so far, uh, under ingredient costs, we've got uh, I, on a 25-pound bag basis bought at the supermarket, which is still not the cheapest way you can get it, um, it was $15. So I'm using $2.10 worth of, uh, that's perfect, $2.10 worth of uh, sugar. My tap water, I mean, I, I, you could put one penny on it, but I, I put nothing because it was going to mess up my math. So uh, tap water is next to nothing. And then the Sunkiss lemons were my most expensive. That was $7. But the only thing available at Publix, which is a relatively expensive supermarket uh, for fruit, uh, was the Sunkiss lemons in a bag. They were all perfect. They were large. But you wouldn't have gone for the less expensive lemons anyway. I would have gone for the less expensive lemons anyway, because as long as they're California, uh, they have great taste. They are better than the, f we have the best oranges, oranges and grapefruit in Florida, but our lemons are not that good. But either way, uh, my, my cost for the lemons was $7. I could do the same product, and this is what Jeff and I talk about all the time, and, and he turned out to be right. I could use a uh, lemon extract. Um, let's say that's a, that's a lemon extract. And I'm going to use about two ounces of it. And it's going to cost somewhere around, what did I say, 50 cents uh, to use about two ounces of this. So my $7 goes down to 50 cents. But what's happened? My product is not the world's best. The world's best is my formula here with uh, real lemons in it, sun-kissed lemons I like. Uh, this is the top of the line that you can make. You can make it for 50 cents less and save $6.50 by using an extract. Well, uh, you can't believe the number of people who will go the extract, the cheap route. And, 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 and according to Jeff's line of thinking, and now mine, that doesn't make sense because at the end of the day here, you're going to see that we made um, a net profit of $255 per three-gallon tub. So if I use the extract, I'd Wait, be down to... Repeat that. Two, Repeat that profit. Two hundred and fifty-five dollars net profit, net profit per three-gallon tub. Now, if I'd used the extract, I would have made about two hundred and fifty-one. Uh, yeah, two hundred and fifty-one dollars of profit. Two fifty-five versus two fifty-one, and the difference is my fresh lemon ice is talked about all over the country, and my extract ice is perfectly great for selling at Yankee Stadium an audience that's a captive audience, and they don't really care about flavor, they don't expect to get good, they just want it cold. Well, why give them just cold when you can give them spectacular? And, and you know, When you can give them the best. Yeah. That's the, that's the key to the whole thing. If you're going to make ice cream or ices, make the best in the world, the best, better than anybody's. Won't you feel good about that? Having 30 flavors, 50 flavors, of the absolute best product in the world. Your wallet's going to feel the best because you've gone from a 255 profit to 251. So what? <laughs> You're making so much money. Uh, is this your lemon juice? That's my lemon juice. So what are we doing with these lemons? They're just for uh, the zest. Oh, okay. Well, oh, I, I've been I cut a few. Oh, uh, that's okay. I and why is this here? To show people how you squeeze lemons. I mean, they think I'm there all day long with a hand squeezer, and this thing costs like $14.95, maybe $29.95 from Black & Decker. So that's all you need to get going. You know, later on you can get fancy and buy a, a you know. Or you could just use this. $700 version of that. Yeah, but that gets tiring. But then you, uh, then you save an extra uh, 32 cents every batch for the first six months. <laughs> You're Okay, um, yeah, I have more product than I wanted. 
Uh, oh, because I was going to put it in here. Great. Wrong machine. Oh, that's mine. I know. So I had to sanitize this real quick. Sorry okay. for the delay. It will be worth it. Andy already pre-sanitizes these, but I like to do it just for a little bit. I don't. I just go. Do you see the sanitizer? No. Does anybody see the big white jar? Thank you. I just bought a six pack of that on eBay. Wow. Yeah. Good idea. Pretty pretty inexpensive. Six pack's gonna last you four years. I know, I know. That's but it doesn't go bad. No, and it doesn't. And it brought my costs down considerably. In a pinch. Uh, I buy this because it's a good product. This is Stera Sheen. And I buy it because it's a very good product. And I'll pass it around. The health inspectors like it. And it's all about making the health inspector happy. If, uh, I, uh, if, if I was I in a far off land and couldn't get this easily and I had to sanitize something, I can use a cap, not a cup, but a cap full of Clorox bleach to a gallon of water and get the same effect. So you can just see what that looks like. Um, and also, there's a lubricant that we use on the drive shaft. You could use Vaseline, uh, but the Sterachine, again, the health department likes this. I had a health inspector tell me I was using a jar of Vaseline. And he said, don't you know you're contaminating the jar every time you put your finger in it? I said, gee, it's a wonder we ever got out of infancy, you know, with mom using that stuff. Well, that didn't go well over either. So uh, sometimes you keep things around because it makes the health inspector happy. Gate closed. Yep. You're using all the product? Yeah, Okay. because I'm going to use this bigger machine. So we have basically three ingredients, right? Yes. Yeah. Sugar, water, and lemon juice. And the zest, I don't think it's going to add anything to the flavor, but it looks nice. When this comes out, it's going to, instead of being yellow like an artificial lemon ice, it's going to be pure white with little specks of lemon in it. It, it just looks great. Now, I have a customer up in Rhode Island who will remain nameless, but he is so cheap. How cheap is he? He's so cheap that um, if, he, if there was such a thing as artificial water, uh, he would use it. And what he does is he uses uh, corn sugar, which is cheaper than cane by a couple of pennies. He uses a cheap lemon extract. And he throws in whole pieces like this into his ice. And so when you get it in your cup, it's got a piece of real lemon in it. And you go, oh, man, that is fresh. <laughs> and it's anything but. You know, it's, it's, it's Dow chemical personified. Um, so we're good to go here. Thank you. This has got sterishing in it, right? Yeah. I'll save it for when I have to do it. Okay. Oh, one thing. If you, um, if you rest this on the lip, it might tend to spill, even though it's a huge lip. Uh, I, I raise it up a little bit, and then you won't spill. All right, we're going to hit the infinite overrun control, which is, allows you to make virtually any product that's on the market. Lemon juice would be good. We'll put that in in a second. Uh, so I'm going to hit Italian ice and start. That gives me the speed that I want for Italian ice. I'm going to turn on the refrigeration, set a cheap timer. And add my lemon juice. I think I'll add the uh, zest that Jeff did first so that the lemon juice will wash it down. You can even buy zest. Pre-zested lemon? Pre-zested uh, juice. Yeah, pre-zested lemons. Okay, that goes in. The 
This is one quart of lemon juice that I squeezed yesterday. I don't think it took me 10 minutes. But that's the difference between my lemon, my lemon ice and everyone else's. Now, that was um, three and a half pounds of sugar. And this is what I call a New York Italian ice. If I was in Philadelphia, go down the Jersey Turnpike to Philly, the name changes from Italian ice to Italian water ice. It's the exact same thing, except in Philadelphia, they like the product a little bit smoother than we New Yorkers like. So they add an extra half a pound of sugar to this formula. Uh, and the extra sugar, more sugar makes the product smoother. And since it's only a half a pound for, per three gallon tub, it's not gonna make it any sweeter, but it will make it smoother. So when someone says, oh, I had this great smooth creamy Italian ice, uh, and, and if they say, uh, this great smooth creamy water ice, I always say, so when did you leave Philadelphia? Uh, because I know right away where they're from. Now, in New York, I said we use this formula. Uh, so Philadelphia down the, the turnpike uses more sugar. We use my formula. You get out to Bay 8th Street in Brooklyn, where uh, it's all Italian neighborhood. Nobody speaks English. And uh, their product, uh, they call granita or granite. Uh, it's a more crunchy ice. It's very crunchy. And they <laughs> use a half pound less sugar in the formula. So the less sugar, the more crunchy the product. The more sugar, the smoother the product. So you've got the entire sp spread of people's secret formulas. That uh, I, I can't tell you how many times people would come in and uh, they'd say, oh, we just spent $10,000 over in Brooklyn for a secret lemon ice formula. And my mind thinking in a bigger machine than that, I'd say, oh, let me see, it was seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, they're getting a little pale. Uh, a quart of fresh squeezed lemons, and it's got to be from California lemons. You know, they're palpitating by this point. And oh, and don't forget to zest the outside skin. Well, at that time, the husband's on the floor, you know, passed out, and the wife is going, You spent $10,000 and he just gave it to you for free. Well, that's what I do. Uh, since we left New York and it became a little safer to hide down here, I can give you my formulas, and that, that's a great one. Uh, one day we'll make Lily with the nuts. I was sworn not to give out that formula, uh, which is vanilla and rum and toasted slivered almonds until Lily passed away. She was up in Harlem. And you didn't want to mess with Lily because her husband uh, owned a large canine service, canine attack dogs. So we had a nice arm's length relationship. I won't give away your secret, you know, and uh, you I won't send your attack dogs. I make Lily with the nuts ice cream. I know you do because I gave away the formula. You were sitting in a class listening, and, and you took it for your own. <laughs> so there's a lot of good stuff out there, but you know what? It's all mathematical. Hi, Sammy. I had someone call up, write me a couple of months ago. It's disgusting. You have a dog walking around your, your restaurant. I said, lady, this is no restaurant. This is my living room. And besides, <laughs> we sanitize the dog every morning. That's right, yes. <laughs> Not at night, but in the morning. Right. Um, so uh, it's, it's all mathematical. In order for a product to freeze uh, properly, it has to have a certain amount of water to sugar. Otherwise, it'll ice up in the machine. Too much sugar, it'll be too sweet. Um, people, uh, it seems like I'm getting off on a tangent, which I do, but I'm not. Um, people call up, very classic case, Malik Rose, basketball player from uh, a few years ago. I think he now works for ESPN, had a series of um, uh, Italian ice businesses in Texas. And he calls up one night, Saturday night, and he says, Steve, and he's had his machine for five years, my machine is making a terrible racket. It's banging and clanking, and it's horrible. <clears throat> and so we went through some simple things. Is the water turned on? Uh, did you put enough product in the machine? Are the blades in right? Everything was fine. And so finally I said, hey, Malik, what are you making? He said, cherry ice. I said, taste it. What's it taste like? And he tasted it. He said, oh, gosh, it's awful. It tastes like cherry juice and water. I said, Malik, you left the sugar out. It's just making a giant ice cube. That's why it's freezing up. So the solution was not to call in Taylor and have him come in in two days and put in a $900 expansion valve, 200 for the part and the rest labor. The, 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 the solution was to put in the seven pounds of sugar. 
and <laughs> then it ran fine. So that's the kind of stuff that we hear. But when you look at these prices, uh, it's costing me a roughly, you, you said over the phone, 10 bucks. Yeah. And I came out with $9.10, so that's a throwaway. Even if I'm low, I mean, if, if, if I'm low by a dollar on the cost of the lemons, just deduct it from the $255 uh, profit. And it's actually 264 gross profit, less your, your food cost. And yes, you can bore me all day long telling me, yeah, but I've got electricity and labor and, and everything else. And uh, yeah, that's true, but you know, you're not going to break it down to every single ounce of product. You, you talk to your accountant and you, you, know, it's, you can drive yourself nutty trying to figure out, well, is this, are these lemons tax deductible and how does that affect my cost? Don't bother about it. Just look at the cost of your ingredients as a bargain compared to what you're going to sell it for. Any questions? Everything's been quiet. Yes, sir. Steve, how long does this uh, stay? And always have to be for, you know, until you sell it. Good question. Uh, Mike, are we getting that on the new uh, microphone? Sure. Oh, great, so I don't have to repeat it. Okay, Italian ice, the best preservative in the world is cold. So if I was going to make, I would like to make it fresh every three days. Uh, I want a real fresh product. But if I'm going to wholesale, uh, I can't be making it every three days. I'm going to sell you lemon ice uh, in May that you're going to sell in June because I'm going to ship you, you know, 40 tubs. So in that case, cold is the best um, preservative that you can do. You take a chest freezer like that, crank it down to 10 below, and this stuff will be so hard you couldn't scoop it with a hammer and chisel. And nothing is happening to it. It's just staying as good as it was. Uh, once I put it into my serving cabinet over here, this thing is set because I'm not using any chemicals. This cabinet is adjusted to 16 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than ice cream. And once I put it in here, it's good for easily three days. Now, unless you have a problem with the weather, you know, a monsoon came through that you didn't expect, uh, if you can't move this tub in three days, maybe you've got the wrong flavor. Maybe people don't like bubblegum licorice Italian ice because it's not moving. You ought to be able to move the tub in three days. But during that three days, it's really not a big deal. If you go into a, a, a genuine uh, Italian pastry shop on Astoria Avenue over by, uh, the Triborough Bridge, now called the, J the uh, John F. Kennedy, or the, uh, the Kennedy Sun Bridge, whatever. It's oh, not really? even the Triborough anymore. Really? No, it's disgusting. Um, you go in, and the you ask for a lemon ice, the server flips this over, and the server reaches in, and you see the server's arm going like this, and then they pull it out, and they put it in a squeeze cup and hand it to you. Because there's no chemicals in this, there's just sugar, water, and flavor, a little puddle of lemon juice, a small puddle, has formed in the center. And the server is remixing it before they hand it to you. So I like these cabinets for ices because um, the, the customer doesn't need to see that little puddle. And because the lid shuts like that, they hold their temperature. The worst cabinets for holding anything are those visual display cases, the glass ones. They look nice in the store, and you can get away with it most of the time, most stores do, as long as you're not near a window, as long as you keep the air conditioning on at night, and, and as long as you do this, this, and this. Otherwise, it's an awful lot of air space up here that has to be refrigerated. These are cheaper, and they're, they're simple to use. How are we doing? Ready? It's ready? Okay, let me pull it out. And um, I can tell you later who makes those. I'm going to use a real tub. Dry ice is okay, but it's, uh, it's, well, if I have a cooler like that, I don't need dry ice because that's a refrigeration unit. It plugs in. Dry ice does fine, but it's going to take it down to about 30 below. All right, watch this. Refrigeration is off. Watch how fast this comes out. You won't see this anywhere else. Look at that. Beautiful. And now you close it down and you go to, this was lemon. Now we go to orange, because orange is a citrus and it's not as tart, but it has some tartness to it. So any tiny, tiny bit 
that's left in the machine will get covered over by the orange ice. And then after orange, I'm going to go to cherry, which will cover over the orange. Then I'm going to go to grape. Then I'm going to go to black raspberry. And then I'm going to break for lunch because I'm not just making one tub. I'm making, you know, six, eight, ten, whatever I need, tubs of lemon before I go on to the next one. That is the whole process right there. And that's what it looks like, all nice and pure and natural. Yes, question? What temperature do you keep it at when for scooping? If I'm scooping Italian ice, it's 16 degrees Fahrenheit. If I'm using stabilizers in it, I can probably take it down to about 10, but usually 16. Now let me get some cups and spoons and... Right here. Oh, you have them? Okay, how about the spoons? Right They're over there. Let me just try it myself. That's good. Now, everybody's got different personal tastes. You could add a little more sugar and make it a little sweeter. You could add a little more lemon juice, whatever you like. But this is your mathematical starting point. So come on up and give it a try. I'll start rinsing that out for you. Smile. It's a miracle. Life's good here. Would you ever put stabilize in it to keep it with your ice cream? No. 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 If I see uh, Italian ice in the same cabinet as stabilizer, I run like hell. Or I mean, with ice, ice cream and ice together, I run like hell. Because it tells me the owner doesn't care about making a fresh product. They're going to throw a lot of chemicals in it. Well, that's going to be a trick. That'll be a challenge. How tall are you? Six seven? Six five. Six five. What? <laughs> there was hardly anything left in the machine. And since we're switching over, are you making an ice next? I'm making cream ice. Okay, so I don't even need to rinse any further. Well, really? If you want me to. Well, I have a, I just prepared this to throw back in and come out. All right, will do. Andre. But look how fast all this just happened. Andre, did you get my email? Oh, okay. Okay. Jay. Hey, you know what we don't have today? What's that? The name tags. I don't know who these people are. Oh. Who are you? I'm Hilda. Hilda and um, Lou? Yep. Lou's easy. Yeah, easy. That's what I've heard anyway. Very easy. Thank you. Somebody asked me if we gave out certificates, and so I looked online, and I can get some DeVry College uh, <laughs> DeVry. School, school of Automotive Marketing certificates to give out. Thanks, man. If you like oh. that. A very small help. All right, so in the Boom. time it took to uh, sure. serve everybody some lemon ice, this thing's all cleaned out and ready to go to chocolate ice cream or no, no, anything no. else you want to do. Okay. Completely Here, you want different. To, uh, uh, you want to save that, right? Yeah. Okay. And this has been through the machine? Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? Do you like it? And, of course, like I said, you take the ba basic mathematical formula that I've put together for you and you change it to your personal taste so that six months from now you can say, oh, you got to try my lemon ice. It's so much better than Steve's. Yes, sir, you had a question. I forgot. <laughs> well, good. But, and, and you can make it better by making it your own. Some people put in egg white. Uh, some people put in a, a little dab of salt. You can certainly change the sugar-water ratio. Sugar also enhances flavor. So if you wanted a little more flavor, you don't need more lemon juice. You need just another maybe uh, cup or two of uh, sugar, and that will enhance the flavor. So I'll turn it over to Jeff. Since he made Italian ice, I thought I would make the logical or the known derivative of it. Uh, after Ita Italian ice has been around for years and years and years, and then somebody said, hey, what would happen if we added a little ice cream mix, a little cream to Italian ices? 
And that opened up another industry. In the world, it's not as well known, but it's, you'll taste it, it's really good. It's called cream ice, cream ice. Another name for cream ice that you're more familiar with is sherbet. Sherbet has been around for a long time too. Sherbet is simply Italian ices with a little cream in it. Just as easy to make. And a friend of mine in South Florida, Evan, if you're listening, uh, made a fortune, and all he sold was cream ice. Uh, he's got three of these now, three of the 24s now, two shops, lines every night. All he sells is cream ice. And initially, the flavors of sherbet or cream ice were uh, orange, raspberry, lemon, cherry, but now the cream ice industry has gone through the roof. You get cookies and cream, pistachio, toasted almond, uh, everything. So today I thought we'd follow up his ices with cream ice and make something I've never made before. Uh, I think we'll try this. If it works, it works. It's Bailey's cream ice with real Bailey's. Uh, so if any of you have a problem with the uh, alcohol, then don't have it. Uh, he'll eat it anyway. Oh, Mormons, you know, he'll eat it. All right, so the ingredients in cream ice, cream ice is a very simple formula for your machine. It's three, two, one. That's cream ice. Three quarts of water, two quarts of ice cream mix or cream, I'm sorry, two pounds of sugar and one quart of ice cream mix. Three, two, one. Three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, one quart of mix. Steve, I need mix. Coming up. <laughs> we have everything. Okay. Three, two, Three, two one. one. Three quarts of water, Hi. two pounds of sugar, one quart of mix. We call it mix. It's... Uh, when he brings it in, you'll, it comes in bladders. Everybody, is everybody in this country? Uh, so you have no problem getting mixed from a dairy. It comes in a carton or a case with two bladders in it. Each bladder is 10 quarts. Uh, and they run about 22 to $25 each. Right over here. This is what they look like. And uh, you get two to a box. And there are 10 quarts. And essentially, it's cream. Uh, it, when we work, I call it cream. Uh, the word mix is, is sort of a misnomer, uh, but it is a blend of uh, whole milk, cream, skim milk, solids, all that stuff. Uh, what percentage What? What percent do we use? Well, I'll tell you what percent I use. What percent do we use? 10. 10%. Lemon ice. For everything. Everything. Oh, try it. It's good. And by the way, he was surprised. I think you'll like it. Who makes My the best ice formula. cream in the world with 10% mix? Me. And Very them. Free, fat and them. Free, all those people. Free, sodium free, now they make the world's best ice cream 10% mix. How can you do that? Hagen dazs is 16%. Uh, ben and Jerry's 16%. Uh, and then there's everything in between. There's 10%, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 22. So why 10? Why 10? Think about it. Why 10? Now, is that the same as software? No, no. No, we don't mention garbage. Soft serve is garbage. No, soft serve, what is soft serve, 8% or something? Or? Well, you can get 10 and 5. Yeah, 10 and 5, right. Uh, but it's junk, right? It's, you even sell that, don't you? We do. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So we're going to make, um, I think he uses 10% actually, I'm not sure. I use 10. I'll have to ask him when he comes in. Huh? Well, nobody knows, right? Who makes the this mix is made, in Florida, you get mixed from two places. You get mixed from Dairy Mix over in Sarasota or Clearwater, where, where are they? Sarasota. 
uh, or you get it from Ice Cream Club in South Florida, Boynton Beach. Uh, both very good. They both have the gradations of butterfat percent, uh, so you can get what you want. I tried 12 at one point a few years ago, and uh, I, I know you find this hard to believe. I threw the ice cream out. Uh, it was too gummy for me. Too gummy. Pay no attention to the dog. All right, so it's three. However, uh, I started life with a six-quart machine. Uh, is this it? Yeah, that's it. I started life with a six-quart machine, and that was my formula, three, two, one. Today, I'm using a 12-quart, so we'll go up a little bit. Uh, I only brought enough for my three, two, one, but we'll stretch it a little bit. Uh, what was the question? What percent butterfat do you use here? Is that 10 or 12? 10%. 10, okay. Because it's so hot and so humid, you already told them, uh, that people eat flavor. Nobody walked out of an ice cream parlor and said, oh, that's the best butterfat I ever ate, or I can't wait to come back tomorrow because like, and I'm talking against my own infinite overrun control. I can't wait to come back tomorrow because I love the air content. People eat flavor. Boy, that mint was minty and fresh, and the chips weren't chalky because they were good quality. People eat flavor. Brown sugar dissolve in water, too? You don't have to. Does Will it? it? Yeah, sure. Okay. But you don't have to. Let the well, I, I combined it. Oh, it's that much. What? Yeah, no, yeah, it's ahead. not. No, it's just a little bit. But uh, I mixed it in with white sugar. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I've never made this before, and when I was leaving my shop last night, uh, I saw a, uh, a little half bag of brown sugar, because I use brown sugar a lot in stuff we make. And I thought, well, let's put that in. That can't be bad. So this is uh, an experiment. And you guys are the guinea pigs. But it'll be good. Uh, so we have here four quarts of water instead of three, because it's a larger capacity machine than, than normal. So we'll add a little more water. Uh, <laughs> And then sugar, I've mixed a little brown sugar. It looks like a lot, but it's not. It was maybe a quarter of a pound of brown sugar with a pound and three quarters of white sugar, cheap white sugar. And although Steve prefers that we mix it outside of the machine, uh, I don't. Uh, if, if you were sitting in my shop right now, I would have poured the sugar right down the gullet with the water, uh, not like this. I would have poured the water in first, turned the machine on, then poured the sugar in, uh, because I've got the greatest mixer in the world in here. So to me, this is redundant, uh, not even as efficient as that, but so be it. If you have any questions, just ask away. So we'll add this uh, sugar-water mixture. And your machine comes with this little guard up here. Oh, stop. Who cares? And we need some uh, mix. How much mix? You said one, quart. one quart. So you we'll add like a quart crystal? and a quarter to, uh, by the way. This is a good time to bring this up. Is this, why do we get into this business? We get into this business for profit, right? Right? I mean, yeah. you're going to make a, a boatload of money here. Yeah. But there are two other reasons to get into this business that are equally important if you want to be in the business for a long time. Profit is number one. You know, count de monet. We're going to count the money every week. But what's the second reason that we're in this business? Fun. Fun. This is fun. Uh, actually, that's the third. The second reason is art. This isn't, it's science, I guess, but it's more art. See, I don't know the exact dimensions now, but this is so hard to screw up this product because really when you're adding things like cream and sugar and flavors, a little of this, little of that is going to be your personal best anyway. So you may like something uh, a little less sweet than I do. I prefer my ice cream really sweet, 
and flavorful. I like that flavor just punching you in the face. So there's art that's involved here. If it were pure science, uh, you'd buy my book and you wouldn't even need to sit here. You just go home and say, okay, a cup, a quart, an ounce, and that's it. But it's not that way. It's, uh, and Steve and I try to work that way so you see that. The real life, little of this, little of that, taste it, adjust it. It's like baking. You probably bake, right? It's like baking. Little of this, little of that. And then before you finish it, it needs a little salt. And so you add a little salt. So that's the deal. A uh, measuring cup would be right here. Okay. Oh, no, right here. Otherwise, I'll get you Sammy's. What? Otherwise, I can get you Sammy's measuring cup for food. <laughs> All right. What we say? A little more than the quart, right? Yeah. Okay. This is a quart. Oh, actually, we can go to 36 here, which will probably work out fine. I don't think I ever saw a measuring cup 36 ounces. Okay. These are a little... Um, unwieldy. They're, they take a little getting used to, and we're going to have a Q&A uh, before or after lunch, and there's a, an invention Steve is coming up with that will make handling these a little easier. Uh, I'm not in favor of it. You know, you, you work with it, you work with it. You, why rely on something else? But that's another story. Okay, so they all have a pop top, and they are jiggly. <laughs> It's a funny word, jiggly. They're jiggly. It's a uh, waterbed in many. Uh, right, that's right. It's like your old waterbed. Yeah. The one I still have. <laughs> so we'll add uh, a bunch of this stuff. And if you drank this, you did, right? If you drank this, you would love it. It's, it's absolutely, right? What's it taste like? Tastes like the world. Yeah, it's great. And if you're a coffee drinker, put this in your coffee, and uh, you've got like a dessert coffee every time. Put some whey isolate powder in it, and you got something really healthy. Uh, uh, so what do we got in the machine? We have our sugar and water, and now we're going to add our cream. So I'll turn it on to get it nicely mixed, uh, which will be nice. Correct. It mixes while it's churning. Churning. It, yes. <laughs> Whatever. What? I put the water in. Okay. I did notice there's a little uh, residue here. And I don't want to miss that. <laughs> don't step in it. See, that's why I run a class, because they clean up after yeah. me. Yeah, well, the other way of looking at it is the fun thing about running your own business is you do everything. All right. So now all that's left, now what do we have? We have sort of plain vanilla cream ice. So I thought we would add something that if you're going someplace special or you have a private party, uh, maybe you would add some Baileys and make Baileys cream ice. So I've got Baileys here. Uh, the bottle is just one of my bottles from the store that I make vanilla in. But because it's dark, you can't see through. But this is Bailey's. And how much are we adding? Uh, whatever's in here. <laughs> it's not two quarts. It's probably one and a half or so. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, I predict, by the way, this is going to be amazing, but I don't know. How much is it going to affect the freezing? Well, it's, it's, it's a great question. How much will that alcohol, but really Bailey's, affect the freezing? Interesting. Bailey's is what? It's Irish whiskey and cream when you buy it in the store. So really, you're 
you've got cream. Now here's the deal on the alcohol. Everything in the universe is molecules, little tiny round balls, you know, that they show you on TV. Little tiny balls, everything, his hat, that cup, this table, all the food you eat, everything is molecules. Alcohol is molecules too, but those little things won't freeze. You can't freeze alcohol, everybody knows that. You can bring it way down, but it's not gonna freeze. So what do we do? We take the molecules of this, this is the cream. So those molecules will surround the molecules of liquor, of alcohol, and they will suspend it. So we're not freezing the alcohol, but we are suspending it. And that's what will enable us to use it in products like cream ice or ice cream. Uh, you're suspending it within the other molecules. And in fact, the molecules in cream look for it because that one won't freeze the alcohol. So they look for it and they surround it. So all the, everything that comes out is a blend of alcohol and cream and the alcohol has suspended the, the uh, uh, the, the cream has suspended the alcohol within it. So that's why it, is, it freezes. So it doesn't really freeze. The cream freezes, but He's not the alcohol. An Italian but ice. It, it's it'll Bay appear that Irish way. Cream. And it doesn't take longer? Well, you've got all these great questions. His question is, does it take longer to freeze, right? right. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because it's fighting. It's fighting it. It doesn't want to freeze. It can't freeze. So the, the cream is helping it to do that. It does take a little longer, not a lot. I had an older Emery Thompson, 24 quart, older. And a batch of this would take about 34 minutes. Now I have a brand new Emery Thompson. Thanks to my good, no, I pay the same thing you do. I have a brand new one, and it takes less than half of that. So, Steve, in the Q&A, I want to ask him why it takes so much shorter time to make my product now with a new machine than it did with an older machine. And it's significant. I, I text him every day that I make ice cream when I'm making 100 gallons. I make 100 gallons in a day in about six hours. And I text him and I praise him because it, I could never do that before. I could never make a hundred gallons of ice cream in a day. Just me. But now, it's not bad. I get time to uh, go to the beach afterwards. <laughs> uh, but I do, you know I text you all the time yeah. thanking you a hundred for, gallons. It's for, amazing. Making, for me making a hundred gallons. In no time at all. I have to make about 300 to 380 gallons a week. Luckily. <laughs> Fortunately. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, I have to thank Jay, one of our students this week, for uh, teaching me to do this. Now, how about alcohol? <laughs> how about alcohol? Yes. Uh, the question is, how about a fuller alcohol, fuller proof alcohol, like tequila or rum? I use a lot of rum. Uh, everything's the same. The world doesn't change. It's still a molecule of alcohol that won't freeze, surrounded by molecules of cream that will freeze. But what about it? Italian ice? It'll still work. Yeah, of course. But you won't get this to work in any other machines. Uh, if you look at any recipes, they don't get cold enough. They don't get cold enough. Even uh, they, there's uh, scientists who write books, and they'll always tell you add the alcohol as it's coming out because the machines don't have enough strength to freeze it. As Jeff is saying, we're not freezing the alcohol; we're putting it in suspension, surrounded by a frozen product. But the other machines just turn to mush. So if you're going to do alcohol ice creams, you can do this. Oh. Now, before you serve this, as soon as you take it out. I'm going to bring Christy in because I forgot to show people how to eat this product properly. In she's a squeeze going, cup we're going to yeah, put she's it? Going to do a cream ice? No, just, just the one. Okay, okay. She's going to do a okay. fast demonstration. Okay, okay. Boy, that's good. 
Is it? Oh, man. Uh, you're adding alcohol into this. Do you have to have any certain licenses, or are there? Where like, do you live? Is, is, is that what it depending on? Well, where do you live? It'll be Tennessee. It will be Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> where do you live? Eventually, I live in Tennessee. Did you guys pick that up on the mic? Because I didn't hear it. We got it. Uh, okay. The question refers to liquor licenses. Each state is different. In Florida, there are 45 categories of liquor license. Everything from a carryout to a full serve pour bar to a catering hall to a country club to a yacht to hotels there's 45 of them so you just have to check and see where you are <laughs> now i'll tell you a uh, well every state is different so we don't know them. actually new york state my old state which is the most restrictive state on earth uh oh no 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 has the um, most lax rules about alcohol i've heard urban legend uh, of somebody, it might even be in this room, about uh, asking about putting alcohol in ice cream and was told that if you make bourbon vanilla ice cream and you put vanilla ice cream in the machine and you put bourbon in and you serve it in a dish, that's okay. But if you take that bourbon vanilla ice cream and put it into a blender and turn it into a milkshake, that's a cocktail. I'm sorry, you can't sell cocktails. Now, Unless that you're properly licensed to sell them. Isn't that the stupidest law you've ever heard? So, no, no, it's not. <laughs> it, well, uh, you don't no, have a liquor not. license. Whether I have one or not you don't need it. is irrelevant. Yeah. But in your instance, it is important because you're going from a product that people will eat recreationally to a drink that they're going to consume large quantities of. Right. So I would make a distinction uh, Except there. most of us consider a milkshake to be a, a treat, and we're not going to drink large quantities of it. We're going to have one. They drink bottles of NyQuil at night to get high. <laughs> True. We're going to talk in the Q&A. I want to bring up CBD oil. Uh, which is getting a lot of press and Jeff and I have not discussed it, but in just cursory I can tell that we have uh, Different opinions of it. So it should be pretty interesting. I don't know his opinion. Mine is still evolving. I haven't reached a decision, but uh, there's a lot of things going on uh, That's interesting this and other products. We can talk about it if you want at any time about pint sales um, While Jeff's waiting for this to be done pint sales are through the roof um, it, uh, Hagen dazs and Ben and & Jerry are two companies we put into business and they've always sold pints. They're now up to $5.13 a pint. Um, my customers are getting seven, eight, nine, even in major cities, $10 a pint. And, and part of it is because of the millennial age group, which uh, I, 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 tend, I will make fun of them, but I'll tell you right now, we were just reading an article this morning in the paper that 60,000 new businesses were started alone in Manhattan uh, in 2018 by millennials. 60,000 businesses. They are the new entrepreneurs. We wondered where they were going to come from. We all, us baby boomers, thought, well, the world's going to hell in a handbasket without us. Well, it isn't. Uh, they are um, starting businesses. They're starting I mean, a, a large number of my customers fall into that age group and they're starting spectacular businesses. And, and they work hard, they work long, and the pint sales have become part of it. I almost think it's like craft beer. Uh, craft beer came along, it used to be, you could go out on a Friday afternoon, buy a, a six pack of Bud, Bud Light 550, and that's what you had for Friday night. Now, it's nine, 10, 12 dollars, uh, 14 dollars for a pint of locally sourced and produced beer with interesting names like Wicked Blue Moon or whatever name you come up with. But the point is, it's looked upon as a reward. Uh, we would look at it, my age group would look at it and say, $12 when I can get Bud for $5.50? Uh, they look at it and say, I've had a hard week, I've worked really hard, I've done really well, I deserve this. And that has sold these beers and driven the price up, which is all good. Uh, because the economy is good. People have jobs, they're making money. So in ice cream, the same thing has happened. We were always stuck. When ice cream was $2.50, we could not improve the quality. Uh, we made, I, I'll hide the name, 
my idea of making strawberry ice cream before Jeff and I got together was to open up, this is called a number 10 tin. It's uh, three quarts of heavy, gloppy, lowest grade strawberries in corn syrup, red dye 40, and enough chemicals to keep you, uh, you know, going until the, you know, the 27th century. And this is what we called ice cream. We didn't know any better. And not only did we may have known better, but we couldn't afford better because all we could get was two and a quarter for a scoop of ice cream. Now I'd say the average scoop of four ounces, which I like to say is a quarter pound, Jeff would sniff it and say, that's, that's only a spoonful. It's a kitty size. It's a kitty size. But the point is the prices have gone up and uh, to the point where uh, we can afford to make ice cream for going to the supermarket and buying fresh frozen strawberries and blueberries and putting in Baileys. We couldn't do that 10 years ago. The quality has gone through the roof and the reason it has is because that's what people demand and the quality, uh, the, the price has gone up to where we can afford to do it. So the ice cream business, which was always a good business, you've got a steady income, it's nice, has become a huge money maker. I mean, I, I have, you know, I'm not bragging, it's just a fact, but I have made more millionaires than anybody I know uh, out of selling ice cream and ices. Every store, every machine I sell is going to generate 11 jobs. That's the average amount of jobs working in an ice cream parlor. Well, you know, I mean, how many businesses, I mean, you can go into printing, you know, greeting cards and you're not going to make, uh, starting out, you're not going to have 11 employees. So it's, it's, it's really exciting from that standpoint. But, and, and the pint sales have become, again, like the craft beer. Hey, I deserve this. $9 a pint, so what? Uh, and I better bring one home for Paula, too. So I'm spending $18, but I'm doing it once or twice a week. It's a reward to me. That's the theory. Um, I asked, I, I teach at Penn State once a year at the end of the month, this month. And last year, I asked the head of Penn State, Dr. Robert Roberts, I said, my customer, haagen Ben & Jerry, why do they only sell in pints? He said, because you'll pay $7 for a pint of ice cream, but you won't take, pay $28 for a half gallon. And, and that really is the thing. $7 is affordable to me. And even 14 because I wouldn't dare come home without one for Paula, uh, a different flavor. Uh, so the, it's, it's just, it's not even thought about. Um, one other thing about the millennials, you may not have known this unless I've said it before, is um, they don't have the expenses that we do. The, the two things that we saw as priorities in our life when we were that age was a car and a house. And they're using Uber in the urban cities and there's no rush to buy a house. Uh, they're living in very nice apartments. And they default on their student loans anyway. Well, we're not going to go that way. Uh, but they, they do have a lot of discretionary income. So I'm hiding this. Uh, so that's uh, why it's, it's so great that we can do all these different products. Let me get Christy in. I want to just show you how to eat a, uh, an Italian ice. Hey, Christy. Okay, you want to try this? It's a uh, Bailey's cream ice. Give me one second. Let me just. Okay, I want to hang demonstrate. on. Hold on, it's right here. Because when you call up for um, when you call up for parts, you're going to get Christy on the phone, and uh, nobody calls up for parts. No, they don't. So she's very lonely. But uh, a few minutes ago, Christy did not eat a lemon ice. This is the way you eat it. And, and, and lemon ice is a generic term. I know this is Bailey's, but we we would call it Bailey's lemon ice. Cream ice. Yes. So the proper way to eat it is a squeeze cup. And you just squeeze it from the bottom and eat it. No spoon, no cup. It's so simple. And you could buy a thousand of these for about $20 or, or less. They're so cheap. And if you call them up and ask for a squeeze cup, unless you're from, they're from Manhattan, they're going to look at you like a deer in the headlights. It's a pleated, like a lady's dress, it's a pleated water cup. So don't ask for squeeze cups if you're in Michigan. They go, huh? Just say, I want a pleated water cup. And the only people making them are solo that I am aware of. So come on up and have it. Thank you very much. Good job. Any part sales today? She just said it's the bomb. Good. Okay. Thank you. Bill, it has alcohol in it. What's all that? Same? It's what? Same thing? More, yeah. I, uh, okay. More. Uh, 
Now, after this, we're going to just take a quick uh, 10, 15 minute, 10 minute uh, bathroom break. Everybody get up, stretch your legs, walk around, uh, come back in 10 minutes. I'll make another flavor and then we're going to do a QA. That's good. What part of Tennessee? Um, like Maryville, around Knoxville. Oh, Maryville? Yeah. I know where that is. Yeah. Sure. Have you tried it? What is no. It? No. I'll wait and see if anybody survives before I try it. <laughs> where is Nina Marie's? We'll be in North Carolina. North Carolina, whereabouts? Near Winston-Salem. Okay. Yeah. Got College a plug. Gotta turn around, give a plug for your business. Nina Marie's Italian Ice opening soon. It actually looks like ice cream, doesn't it? It does look like ice cream. It's a winner? Did you try it? No. Okay. Well, they say it's a winner. Well, let's try it. You should try it. I can't. What? A little bit you can have. Not, but not a taste. What? I don't drink alcohol. But it's a taste. No. Since when? 1999. Oh, you want some? Just a little bit. I don't drink alcohol. I just want to give it a taste. There's a place in uh, Austin that does uh, it's called Amy's Ice Cream. That's me. Ice cream yeah. Uh, Amy's, uh, they, she was a professor at... Uh, That's good. Rutgers. Uh, when I met her and... and they he likes going. it. Great place. You're gone. Sammy, none of this for you. Come on, sweetie. You can come out during. You can come during the Q and A. Let's go. Good girl. Let's give some to Paula. Yes. Yes. A big portion. We need to make her happy. That'll give do. her a spoon with it. Uh, let me take one more for Olga. Crystal will get hers when she transfers it. Pretty good. Okay, everybody like it? It's good? Pretty refreshing. It, it is 10%. Right Lou. Lou. What do you mean 255? Profit. Profit. Oh, you want to get into that now? No, no, the whole thing oh, no. on pricing. I'm doing real fast. Go ahead. No, 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 not that. But what's the difference between the ice cream and the water ice? That ice cream, cream costs more because your dairy ingredients cost the whole thing ten dollars a gallon. Is that bag over there? That's the whole difference. Yeah. Because Flavors you're using same. more water, less bag, more bag, less water. So that's the difference. It's. It's significant, but not significant to make you go in that direction exclusively. If, you, if you're looking to open up an ice cream store, and this is going to turn you into an ice store, forget it. it does, I, I only sell ice cream. I think, it, what, a super premium? Is that the category of ice cream? Yours would be very super premium. Okay. <laughs> you got to love it. He puts so much flavor in it. Uh, so I sell what's called super, pre and I'm not saying it's super, pre that's the name of, of the ice cream. You can see it on the machine. There's a category for that. Publix ice cream is premium ice cream. They call it Publix premium. They don't call it Publix super premium. So I make super premium ice cream. That's all I make. I have about 40 flavors at any given time. I have a, a backlog of hundreds of flavors, right? Um, and, and I can make a flavor now. Uh, I, yes, that's right. We just did. And it was good. And I can translate that to Italian ices, to ice cream, to gelato, to super premium. Even dairy free. Ugh. Anything. Anything. So the profit is going to be fairly similar between buying the ice cream from somebody and making it yourself. It's not going to change the world. But what will change the world is your interest and your drive because now you're, the art enters into it you're going to become an ice cream artist because you're going to create, you two are going to sit and say, hey, what about, what about if we took Spumoni and instead put cherry, uh, vanilla, and strawberry in it instead of, and that's what you're going to create. And then, Lou, your store is going to be known for that. 
wow, go to Lou's place. He's got this crazy Spumoni ice cream that you can't buy from the people that are selling you ice cream. And the third one is fun. This is fun. This business is ridiculous fun. And part of the fun is coming up with flavors that you just dream of. Because if you can dream of a flavor, you can make it. Anything, anything. And the one he just glossed over is the money. Uh, I don't gloss over that part. Everybody is in business to make money. So if you're buying ice cream, they have a right to a profit. The normal profit from a, a wholesaler selling a, just a commercial ice cream to you. So if you buy from Hershey's, they've marked it up 33% at least. You're going to save 33%. But how do you put a dollar figure? This is what my customers say to me all the time. How do you put a dollar figure on the fact of that box doesn't say Hershey's ice cream. It says Lou's homemade ice cream with love. Uh, or whatever you want to call it. And only Lou can make that ice cream. You can't make his ice cream. You can't make his ice cream. It's his. And that is, is what really sells. And I subscribe to the, it didn't take me long. It took me, uh, I got a six quart machine and it took me about four months to understand that I don't have to worry about the money. If I do all the right things in, in my world of ice cream, the money will follow me like a puppy dog. And it does. I still don't work. I don't have an accountant. We're big business now. I don't have an accountant. Uh, somebody said, uh, Susie said yesterday, well, how do you do payroll? And I said, well, I come in Monday morning and I write six checks and I go home. <laughs> That's how I do payroll. It, this is a very simple business. Think about it, Lou. Think about it, all of you. You go to the store, you buy these great things, famous Amos cookies and Giardelli chocolates and all this great stuff. You go into your store, you make ice cream, and then you sell ice cream. Keep it in that universe. Don't get ahead of yourself. This is nothing but selling a $5 ice cream. That's all this world is. But your customer base is 7 billion people. That's astonishing. You can open up in Dubuque, you can open up in Brooksville, you can open up in Manhattan, you can open up anywhere. And they come from all these places. And you'll be successful if you put a sign out front with two words and an arrow. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Ice cream with an arrow. And everybody will stop there. Then it's incumbent upon you to make sure they come back three times a week. And we got that nailed, right? Easy. So that's it. Keep it simple. I get business cards. I'm going on and on. Go, right? go ahead. I get business cards every class I run from people who are starting or have started an ice cream store. It, really, it's an ice cream store. And the titles of the people. Joe Blow, CEO, Vice President in Charge of Moo Cow Creamery. You know, <laughs> yeah. He's a CEO? No, the guy makes ice cream. Buy the product, make the ice cream, sell the product. Count the money. It's so simple. Just don't get ahead of yourself. Just don't let that three-letter word get in there, because that'll kill you, you know. The, once you let ego take over, you become the CEO of Moo Cow Creamery <laughs> instead of Lou, the owner of ice, homemade ice cream. So that's it. I could go on for it's, it's, hours. It's, it's that simple. <clears throat> Except I can't wait to get a free moment and tell you about Dairy Free instead of him going, <laughs> uh, But we're going to make something else now. Um, we're going to make uh, Ligonberry Italian ice. What's that? What berry? Ligonberry. What berry? You heard me. And this is uh, from one of my customers in Arkansas. And it's, he said it's like a strawberry. We're going to make it as an Italian ice. It's like a strawberry, but it's got a little bit of tart taste to it. So I thought, now, thinking like him, hmm, tart taste. What else could we do in there that would be tart that would also be good? And that would be the... And we are going to have so much trouble with the name of this acai puree. Uh, a kai. What did you call it? You called it a kai. Some people, uh, I, I said, do, you, do we have any uh, acai puree around here? And they go, wow. Ah. You know, so it's very difficult to pronounce. I, I literally had to break it down into phonics and stick it on my computer and stare at it for a week. It's a, the letter A is in aha, a, and then sai, like the guy's name, sai, and then e. And as uh, Jeff would probably say, if you have to explain it, Steve, it's not worth doing. <laughs> but we are going to do it because it is worth doing. The Ligonberry um, is from Scotland, and uh, that should be. 
I'm going to use the six chord. And I thought this would be fun to try. No, it's not from where I said. It's from Sweden. So here we go. What is that? That's the uh, Ligonberry from Sweden. Okay, you could also do what with that? You could try to open it. I got it. What could you, what could you make? Yo, Fernando. <coughs> That's yes. <coughs> you could also do You're going to call Fernando here. to open it? What? No, I got it. I got one, too. Look at those young dudes. <laughs> you could also make a variegate with it. Which we yeah. did yesterday, you know, as the stripes of the ice cream when it comes out, <coughs> a vanilla fudge ripple, you know, you see the white with the stripe. Is this on? Hello? Yeah, we're on. <laughs> we're on, aren't we? Yeah. What's, oh, you're cleaning yours out. I'm doing a rinse, by the way. Uh, between flavors, <clears throat> if you plan your production properly, you don't have to do this. We, in fact, don't have to do this. Uh, so we won't. We don't have to rinse between flavors because I just looked at the next flavor. If you plan your list accordingly, uh, then you don't have to even rinse. We rinsed once yesterday, right? Once. Uh, and that was between the last two. That's it. <laughs> That's all. The rinse psychology is, in my world, not affected by color, but affected by ingredients. If I have coconut ice cream, I don't want to then go into rum raisin ice cream because I don't want coconut, which will invariably find its way into the next one. I don't want that in my rum raisin, so I'll do a rinse. Yesterday we made Reese's uh, peanut butter cup ice cream and then we were following it with rum raisin so we did have to rinse but that was the only time we rinsed yesterday after Reese's peanut butter cup ice cream which was really good uh, and then rum raisin Steve subscribes to changing to rinsing between colors a chocolate based ice cream to a vanilla based ice cream but I don't I don't go that route because the amount, his, the cylinders in these machines are canted. What, five degrees or something? I don't know, but it's a slight amount. They're canted, so you're going to get most of it out. And if you think about it, I have a 24-quart machine. So if you think about putting 10 quarts of mix in, and you've got three ounces of chocolate-colored ice cream in there, it's not going to make any difference. Mm, go away. Mm, go away. <laughs> All right, Sammy, take off. Whoa, looks like motor oil. Yeah, isn't that great? Hmm. Okay. Now, okay, so here's the uh, water. I'm going to pour in the acai. Why don't you pour the acai in? <laughs> this is a berry from Brazil, and it's the most highest, highest, not, not most highest, highest in antioxidants. Uh, it's a huge West Coast thing. Uh, people absolutely love this product. And I make an acai berry uh, Italian ice. I add to this strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and bananas. And I buy all the fruit at the supermarket, frozen, go ahead, frozen at the supermarket. Uh, in bags because it was picked at its height of freshness, frozen. It's in the ice cream section, very inexpensive. And uh, just wait till it thaws and then just put it right into the machine. So not much to that. Oh, Make here's sure the good zesters. Okay. That's the good zester. Make sure the gate's closed, pour it in. Now I'm not worrying about, I used a pound and a half of sugar, so if I've got a little drizzle of sugar here, I'm not worrying about it. It's not enough to change the formula. Okay. 
Thank you. Now we're going to turn this on for Italian ice. Start. Refrigeration on. Everything's running. Pour in the ligand berries. <laughs> ligand berries. Mike, you want to get a close up of this just so you can see what uh, ligandberry looks like? <laughs> it's a jam. All right, that's it. How easy is that? We've got a new flavor, a ligandberry acai. Never made it before, and we'll see how it comes out. And this is Italian ice or ice cream? This is Italian ice. Okay. Yeah. Now I could do this in a dairy base too. Um, right behind you are some bags. Could you grab one for me? I'll come get it. All right. I want to talk to you while I've got this free time and Jeff's eyes are tired of being rolled. Uh, but he'll continue to roll his eyes about a product that used to be uh, called vegan ice cream. And it was sold to vegans, lactose intolerant, people with upset stomachs, the whole works. It means that there's no dairy in it is basically what it means. You can't sell anything that's called vegan. It sounds like a 90 year old man who weighs 89 pounds and you just want to take him to Ruth Christ and buy him a good meal. Uh, and I'm sure there's some of you out there saying, oh no, we do a lot of business in, in vegan. Listen to me and you'll sell 10 times as much. You change the name, some of uh, my millennial customers in Southern California a couple of years ago changed the name from dairy, f uh, from uh, a vegan to dairy-free ice cream. It's a good term, it rolls off the tongue, dairy-free ice cream, not like acai. And it uh, describes what it is, it's a dairy-free product. Now let me get into the weeds for a second. In order for a product to be called ice cream, uh, this blend here of milk, cream, sugar, and skim milk, the federal government says this has to be 10% milk fat from a cow in order to call it ice cream. If it's 9%, we used to have a term called ice milk. Ice milk sounds horrible. And, you know, McDonald's would sell ice milk milkshakes. You don't hear the term anymore because it sounds so awful, but it is a federal term. It's got to be 10% or higher to call it ice cream. So we're breaking the law by calling it dairy-free ice cream. Now, I'm not so paranoid that I think that the government's gonna send two black Chevy Suburbans and haul me off to Yemen because I'm calling it uh, dairy-free ice cream. They might do that to Breyers. Uh, Breyers sells a dairy-free ice cream that is cashew-based, and it's like eating the Sahara Desert. I've never had anything so bad in my life. Oh, uh, what's this? Did you have to add that? That's not me. Okay. Um, so their product, the way they sell it is they've got their half gallon container and it's got a beautiful close up of mint chip ice cream. And it says mint chip across the top. Uh, and then it says dairy free across the top. So it says mint chip dairy free. It's telling you what it is. And then it says in the bottom in little tiny print that you can't read without a magnifying glass a uh, non-dairy frozen dessert. So they completely avoid the subject by doing that. We're calling it dairy-free ice cream because it's very descriptive. Now, who's buying this? Back to the millennial age group. Ages change. I mean, they have taken us baby boomers and lowered it down to where I fall into the baby boomers where uh, I may not have because I wasn't you know, old enough, but I'm, they now call me a baby boomer. So let's say it's an age group of 21 to, f to 39. It, it's gonna change over the years. It's gonna drop a little bit and it's certainly gonna go up a little bit. They're gonna incorporate 41, 42. Uh, this is, there are 73 million of us baby boomers. There are 85 million um, millennials. That's a huge group. So I've been calling up my customers and say, you've gotta try this dairy-free product. It's, uh, hey guys, your microphone is crackling out here. Can you shut it down? Thank you. It happens when I discuss dairy-free. Um, this is nothing more than coconut and sugar 
and uh, some natural uh, stabilizers in it. It's all, it's all vegan, it's all natural. Uh, I have done a lot of work making my own dairy-free using cream of coconut in the can like you'd get in a bar drink in Key West, uh, coconut milk, sugar, and flavor. I've tried um, agave, uh, which is from cactus instead of sugar. I've tried a bunch of things. I've tried the, um, uh, the cashew nut, of course soy. Soy's got a bad reputation now. Uh, nothing works as well as this product. And it comes in a powder and I mix it with a pound of this product called Mammies, or Mommies, it's pronounced, it's spelled like Mammies, M-A-M-I-S, but it's called Mommies, which is uh, uh, Italian for mother, um, it's, and it's uh, M-A-M-I-S gelato.com, that's the name of the company. And uh, I take a pound of this powder and a quart of water, and I mix it up like you just saw, put it in the machine, and now I can make any flavor I want. I can do mint chip, Oreo cookie, uh, uh, I've done coffee, uh, chocolate, anything that you can do in ice cream, you can do in dairy-free. So I've got this great product. I personally love it. It's more refreshing than ice cream, especially in this hot climate. Remember I told you we don't use above 10% because it's too hot and it's too much fat. This has no... Uh, dairy fat in it, it has coconut fat in it, which doctors absolutely love. They say, this is great for you. It's very digestible. Uh, some of you in the audience know what I'm talking about, some of you don't, but as you get older, you literally cannot sit down and eat a Ruth Crisp uh, filet mignon every night. You know, it just takes too long to process through the gut and it, it just sits like lead in your stomach. Same thing with haagen -Dazs. This product is just, it's beautiful. It's just so refreshing and so simple and so here I am trying to promote it to and I'm not making anything off this I'm just trying to do what I do get the best word out there to my customers so I'm telling my customers up in uh, uh, New York and Massachusetts and Vermont and everywhere else about dairy free and the response I'm getting back is hey Steve we've been in business 40 years with your machine we make a lot of money we have a lot of customers what do I need with this new fad and I go, you need it because it's not a fad. This is a trend. Uh, yes, I've opened up a few stores in where, just where you expect, San Francisco, that is all dairy free, and, and they're doing okay. But I think in uh, you know, Brooksville, Florida, it's gonna be hard to sell just a dairy free product. So I would add this to an existing ice cream parlor, maybe two flavors, maybe four flavors, and my hard ice cream. Now I'm getting the, the, the baby boomers, I'm getting the in the between, and I'm getting the millennials and, and younger. I've got something for everybody. So these guys up north, they're going, I don't need a fad, I don't need this, what are you bothering me with it for? I said, you do need it. Guess what? Us baby boomers are getting older, and the reality of life is we're gonna die off. And you've been in business for 40 years, your grandchildren are gonna take over the business. You don't wanna lose all your customers. By the way, when was the last time a 29-year-old came into your store and bought a double scoop of ice cream? They go, well, I don't know, I never paid attention. Well, they're not. They don't appreciate dairy ice cream. They don't like ice cream, dairy ice cream the way we do. Uh, I have my four millennial kids who are all professionals in their 30s for a Christmas dinner, and I serve them haagen -Dazs. They'll eat it because they grew up on haagen -Dazs. That's what I had in the house. But do they have four or five pints of haagen -Dazs in their freezer? Absolutely not. They don't love it that much. This product, they like. So I am catering to a group that is not even walking through the door of a Hinch's confectionery on Long Island because they don't have the dairy-free. I say, please, put in two flavors. You know, what can it hurt? You know, if I'm wrong, you take it out. And it gets, it gets advertised through social media. Hey, Hinch's is the only place on Long Island, in, in this county, Nassau County, that's got uh, dairy-free. And they go, oh great, text me the address. All of a sudden, they've got lines out the door of people they've never seen before. This is the best thing to happen to the ice cream business, I think, in a very long time. It's gonna be around for a long time. Yes? Um, do you store it at the same temperature as the ices, or is there other ice cream? Do you store it at the same temperature as ice cream? Yes. Uh, I treat it, uh, I don't have to flash freeze it, I can put it in a chest freezer, but I scoop it the same as my um, ice cream. Now, when I made it from scratch, it turned into a big icy block that was, you know, just not good. That's why I like this product. 
It's also an American product. Uh, it's just a good quality. I'm gonna take a different container. What do you want? A different container. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. And, and it's the advertising that also changes it. Um, if I have enough time left here, uh, I don't. I'm gonna turn this off. Jeff, I, I go to a cocktail party, Jeff's there. I say, hey Jeff, look, I got a new iPhone 10. He goes, that's cool, maybe I'll get some one day. End of conversation. Two millennials go to a cocktail party. Sounds like a bar joke, doesn't it? Two millennials <laughs> go to a cocktail party and they say, hey, uh, Jeff has dairy-free ice cream. Oh, really? Text me the address. You text the address, and that person texts it to 10 of their friends, to 10 of their friends. By the time that cocktail party's over, there's, 100, there's uh, 200 people in, in, in Fruitland that know that uh, Jeff has dairy-free ice cream, which he doesn't. His crowd doesn't want it. They're all millennial. Uh, they're all uh, baby boomer. It's the owner um, who doesn't want it. And um, so the word gets out very fast, and it is still so new uh, that there are not a lot of places selling it. So you're going to corner the market on this. And it is just so good. I'm not making it today because I've done it in a lot of videos. You go to emerythompson.com. There's 351 videos. Uh, you can look for dairy-free, and it'll show you just how to make it. The only thing you can't make with dairy-free, in my opinion, is vanilla. Because the vanilla and the... Dairy-free are fighting for world dominance, and, and, and neither one wins out. When it's coffee, ice cream, great. It's coffee with a coconut background. Uh, acai berry, it's, it's a strong acai berry, and you hardly even notice the, um, uh, the coconut. The coconut, to me, is a very pleasing uh, taste, uh, unlike cashew or soy. Uh, so that's something to look at my website, is those uh, dairy-free videos. Uh, you won't be disappointed. That's delicious. You tried it? Yeah. Oh, good. So, I have not made this before. Let's come up and try it. We ought to work on the name, I think, but it's good. We'll just call it Stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is good. It's very good. Yeah, I like that. Come on up. Come on. We're not, we don't deliver. Why? Ooh, now we'll go to um, a Q and A. Okay, and then lunch. Or yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. So after lunch, there's two me, one you. Whatever you, whatever you want. Well, I don't care. Well, I'll, you do one. You do the next one. Then I'll do one. Then you do one. Okay. So you have two more to go, right? I do. Okay. Great. This is good. It's very good. See? I think we ought to call it wild berry ice cream. All right, and you thought I was, how about Swedish? How about wild berry ice cream? All right. You start getting that acai in there. Acai. Yeah, yes. whatever. Yes, I call it Thor's hammer. Thank you, thank you. That's good. Um, the most expensive ingredient I've ever used is... Relation? Um, yeah, that's my son. Okay. <clears throat> I can't I think of it. Uh, it's a liquor. What? And it's, it's, it's an it's a orange uh, liqueur. What's what? the orange liqueur? No. Triple Cremonier. sick, Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier, $49 a bottle. But I give it out instead of sending someone a, a tie, yeah. I send them a couple of pints of Grand Marnier, and it's, it's just spectacular. Same you can't. Ice cream? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't afford to sell it. We made Grand mm. Marnier ice cream yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Did you really? You did. Just me. Blue. It. No, it's not mine. It's. Mammy's, Mammy's gelato.com. How old are you, Lou? 71. I just, I just turned 70. Just take a scoop. Okay. That's fine, thank you. And this is some business. Yeah. the car business? The flavor. I'm retired. Oh, the, cool. uh, the large That's amount of flavor I was. that I, was I played. Also, 60. the acai is that this. good. It's almost overwhelming, the ligonberry. But again, the ligonberry was a uh, jam, so it's already a concentrated flavor. My general rule of... He wants a little more. 
Or maybe not. Yeah. My general rule of thumb is if I hand you a pale pink ice cream and you say that's delicious, what it's is it? It's very good. It tastes Besides good. Besides the fact that I'm probably Breyers, yeah. uh, I have failed at making ice cream because it should be a strong enough no. flavor that you say, wow, that is the best black raspberry I've ever had. If you can't tell what it is, then nothing else counts. No, it's uh, it's very rich. I wouldn't sit down and eat a pint of it. No. You know, you'll never have soft serve that good. <laughs> and it's Italian ice. And now see. Oh, the other thing about this, it is an Italian ice, but with all that fruit in there, I've dramatically raised up the sugar content. So look how smooth it is compared to the lemon ice. So it just goes to show you, if you want a smoother texture, raise the fruit flavor. Steve, excellent. Oh, good. Excellent. I'm taking the recipe. OK. Now, what's this? Is That's the ac acai. Right. It comes in quart containers. Like and this shelf, stuff? That's it. And That's shelf, it? I got it on Amazon. It's shelf stable. You can keep it for months. OK. They sell you uh, six of them for like 68 I think it's really dollars. good. You might not even need the ligonberry. Oh, no, I think you do. It's, that's <laughs> what, everybody finds this really sweet, right? Yeah. yeah. I like it. Uh, does anybody find it too sweet? Too rich. Too rich. That's, now we're talking. <laughs> now you're talking Jeff's language. Absolutely. I'm going to make this stuff. I like it. We're going to get a couple of chairs and sit down and answer your questions. I like it, Steve. Go ahead. Here, you want the rest to give to them? Paula's going to like that, too. It has a sort of a healthy taste to it. Mm -hmm. Think of some good questions. Otherwise, we're going to sit up here looking silly. Don't ask them yet. Wait for the Q&A session. Think of them now. Let them stew. Formulate them. Get them in the right language. Understand what you're really asking. Are these air-cooled machines or water-cooled? See? Don't jump the gun. Think of the questions, and then we'll bring them in here, and you'll have great questions to ask. All right, let me get some chairs. Don't ask them now. Sammy, here. OK. There were several questions going on. So you want to intro the Q&A to the tape? Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. We're going to sit here and answer questions. So uh, who wants to fire away with the first question? If not, we'll start. Yes, sir. Why do you call the dog Sammy when I, I thought her name was Sadie? Sadie was our previous golden retriever who lived, I think, to be about 13. And uh, Sammy has taken over. And the interesting thing about her is uh, Sadie, Sarah Jane Thompson, Sadie came from Boston from a AKC breeder. And Samantha Jane Thompson, she's already here. Yeah, how pretty. Samantha Jane Thompson came from a breeder in New York. It, when we got the AKC papers, it turns out that they both have the same great, great, great grandparents who are Hagen Dazs and Isis Queen. I mean, that isn't what they call a god wink. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And it was only six months after we got uh, Sammy that we got the paperwork, and we're looking at their lineage, and there's the same names that were on Sadie. So they're very similar. Let's go to a real question. <laughs> that was a good one. That was. Go ahead. Is that a water-cooled machine or an air-cooled machine? The CB350 here is air-cooled only. The uh, 12 and 24 and 44 come either air or water, depending on your situation. 90% of the machines, maybe 95% of the machines that leave here, the bigger ones, are water-cooled for very good reason. And that is, uh, there, uh, if you turn on an air-cooled machine, you're going to throw a lot of heat into this room. So this 70 degree room is going to be up to 85 in about an hour and a half. You then have to remove that heat because your employees and you are uncomfortable and your ice cream is melting. You have to remove it by air conditioning. Water is expensive, but it goes up pennies a year. If you look at your water bill from last year to this year, it's hardly changed, even though it's expensive. But you look at your electric bill, and it went up four times last year. And what about efficiency? The water cooled machines are probably a couple of minutes uh, faster than air cooled. Yes, they are. How much water do you think one of those batches took? Um, about 
uh, a half a gallon of water a minute, so an eight minute batch for ice cream would be four gallons of water, about and two toilet flushes. You can reclaim that water. Oh, it's, it's, the water uh, hooks up to your water source, goes into the machine, cools it, and then that same water comes out. So you can reclaim it uh, for your sinks, stuff like that, your mop sink, your hand sinks, your, uh, not your hand sink, but your three base sink. But it's water, it, where do you live? We have strict septic laws in Massachusetts. Septic, Massachusetts. you have to go air-cooled, or what I would do nowadays is they make a water recirculating system, which looks like a small central air conditioning unit that we have in our homes down here. And it's, it's, it's not any bigger than this. And it sits outside, and instead of sending in cool air, it's filled with antifreeze, and it sends chilled antifreeze to the machine, which heats it up to 108 degrees, that's removing the heat, and sends it back outside where it chills it again, over and over and over, so you're off the water grid, you're not using a bit of water, and yet you have all the advantages of a water-cooled machine. Now, my store is uh, septic, and I use water-cooled. Well, I ran into his problem when we had a lady who was on a cranberry bog, and. I uh, was going to dump 108 degree water into the bog and you thought the, uh, the, the whole wrath of the federal okay. and state government was going to come down on okay, her. But I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're okay, but you're okay as far as that. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you, yeah, you've got to go, I would do a water recirc or air cool. Paul. Okay, so you talked about the bigger shops going to three 24 quart machines. Who? Oh. No, my friend Evan has three of my... Uh, your Emery's, the 24s. Okay. So would you recommend two 24-quart um, because of product making? Would you, re would you recommend one for What stage of business are you in? We're in stage one. Well, I'm just talking about the future. Would, would you well, let the future play out. First, see where you're going. Uh, I ran my store. I began it on a six-quart, and I ran it for just under a year on a six-quart machine, making money. And then uh, I moved to the 24. Uh, now I still have 124. Uh, and we, I guess we do maybe 400 gallons a week uh, on the 124. Doesn't mean we make 400 gallons of ice cream a week, but we always have about 400 gallons of ice cream. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't plan further than your first 24 and I, then see where you go. I agree 100% with what he said with a slight modification. When do you know you need another machine? Um, yes, yeah, start with the CB350. It's a fabulous machine. It's got the highest resale of any machine on the market. Emory Thompson's don't exist used. It's just plain and simple, they don't. You can look for the next two years and people call up and say, I've been looking for two years for an Emory Thompson and I just feel like a fool. You could have been in business two years ago making all the money Jeff did, except you're looking around to save a couple of thousand on a used machine. They do not exist. Jeff wouldn't sell off uh, his uh, any, Emory, Emory Thompson any more than he would sell off uh, his car. You know, it, it just isn't going to happen. You won't find him. But you start with a CB350, you go up to a 24. 24 is capable of handling up to three stores. No problem at all. And when you call up, and, and unfortunately I'm brutally honest because it pays in the long run. If I don't sell you this year, I'll sell you in a few years. Uh, you say, oh, I'm running the machine eight hours a day. I need another machine. I go, no, you don't. Uh, hire you probably, somebody else. You hire a, a second person. Uh, I, I, I used to say women uh, who had children in elementary school because they have all day off and they're not doing anything, boy, did I get slapped for that one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the reality was children get sick, and so that employee becomes not 100% reliable. The intelligent thing to do if Jeff ever had to do it, is hire an off-duty policeman, fireman, or someone recently out of the military. They have one thing in common. All three of them look at a task as a mission. Uh, my, my guys in the Bronx looked at it as like, oh, I gotta work at Emory Thompson for another eight hours before I can go back to the bar. Uh, the, that, those three groups, police, fire, and military, look at it as my mission tonight is to come in at 11.30, make ice cream till 5.30, fill up his freezers, and then go home. I mean, and who better can you hand the keys to your business over to than someone from one of those three groups? And the, and, and the point is, uh, just to funnel this down, what he's saying is that 
a 24 can run 24 hours a day. That's right. So uh, when I make uh, 100 gallons in six hours, uh, that's, that's what I'm making. If I had uh, Frida come in after that, she could make another 100 gallons in the next six hours. So that machine, nobody's using it to its capacity, not even close, not even me. And, and I'll run it, now that we're getting into season, I'll run it six hours, three days a week, or four days a week uh, to keep up with the demand. And, and that, I think, whoa. And I always text him and, or call him and say, Steve, thank you, this machine is running flawless. I swear I do this. It's running flawlessly, and I'm just finishing 100 gallons. Now, if, if I had a second store or needed it, another machine isn't going to change anything, but another employee would. So don't worry about the machine. It'll handle all you can give it. I, I'm not saying this because of him. It's, you said it the other day, it's built like a tank, right, Paul? It's built like a tank, and, and it just needs an, a, an employee to run it, an operator. Now, of course, there are people who buy the 44 quart, and here's my test when they call up, because I stick to what Jeff has just said. But if you called up and something has changed in your business, you just got a, an order, a, a continuing order with Publix for vanilla ice cream. Uh, my question to you would be about selling you a 44 quart is, for every tub of maple walnut that you make, how many tubs of vanilla do you make? And you say, oh, well, we make 20 tubs of vanilla to every maple walnut, it's that much more popular. Fine, you need a 40, 44 quart machine because the 44 is gonna crank out four tubs of solid flavors, bang, 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 bang. Uh, like making anything where you're variegating in or adding nuts at the end or anything like that, you may not be fast enough for a 44 quart. So they buy the 44 to do the bulk flavors and keep the 24 for the um, exotic flavors. And then when you get to Italian ice, all bets are off. It's just sugar, water, and flavor into the machine. There's nothing fancy about it. If you need to quadruple production, you buy a 44 quart. That, that's simple. But most times I am talking people out of a 44 and saying, get a stick with your stick with your 24. Now the 24 you can figure uh, uh, 20 gallons an hour. That's that's the real world. 20 gallons 20 an hour. 20 to 30 actually. Well, if you were doing just vanilla. Well, nobody makes vanilla. So 20 <laughs> 20 an hour and we had it down where we were working on the next one, of course, which is what you want to do. You want to work on the next flavor prep time while this is running for the eight, nine minutes that, it's, that a batch is. And we made double batches. So I figure uh, 20 minutes a batch. And a batch will get you six to seven gallons. So you're roughly 20 gallons an hour. I go in five hours, clean up time on both ends and everything and prep, six hours, 100 gallons, I'm done. So if you had, uh, if you had twice the need for that, then just have Connor come in at two o'clock when you're done, Paul, and Connor starts his six hours, and you got 200 gallons that day, and the machine is still saying, bring it on, bring it on. It, it's, it's just a piece of iron or stainless steel that, that will keep running. It's, it's, in a, it's ridiculous, it's silly business. Any other questions? Come on, you had one. You know what happens here is the second we end the question and answer, you're all going to come running up to us and say, tell me about this. So Connor. ask it now because other people want to know too. Yes. Do you have any customers making CBD oil ice cream? That's what we were going to go into next. Uh, yes, I do. I have, a, custom, I have a, a good number of them. And I'm conflicted. And Jeff is hearing this for the first time. And so we're going to discuss what we think about it. Um, so here's my approach so far. Um, I've got a customer down in Tampa. He's getting $25 a pint for CBD oil. Unbelievable. And he sells out. Uh, CBD oil, if you're watching this for the first time and don't know, uh, because I didn't, but then again, I'm a baby boomer. Why would I know? Um, CBD oil is an extract from marijuana, and it, it uh, says that it has none of the um, THC. THC in it, no, none of the properties. However, I was talking to a uh, United Airlines pilot uh, over Christmas, and he said, well, we have a little bit of problem with it. 
uh, in that it's not that pure. It's about 99% pure, and that darn 1% will show up on a drug test, <laughs> and, the, and, and not United American or JetBlue or any of the others has any say on this. The, uh, the, the Air Transport Authority, the government, says any traces of any drugs, you don't fly. In fact, you're probably fired right on the spot. That, that'll be questionable. Uh, so that part of it is what I call wild, wild west. There's no decisions on it. Um, everybody tells me there's no hallucinogenic value to it whatsoever, so that's <laughs> fine. For lack of a better word, I don't know the right pot's, terminology. No, no, no. Pot's not hallucinogenic. Well, whatever. So that's what the I, acid, man. All right. So what I, well, I, I used to remember that, but I forgot what it was about. Um, so whatever. Um, so I ordered some up. I thought, this is great, this is going, and this is going to spread. There's no question about it. It is going to spread like wildfire. I'm going to get a lot of phone calls about using CBD oil. And uh, I have no problem putting it into ice cream. It's simple. I mean, it, it, it couldn't be easier. And the benefits to it are unbelievable. I mean, if, if, you're, uh, if you have panic attacks, it can help that. If you uh, have arthritis, it can relieve that. Uh, it can and it calm your stomach. It, it does a whole lot of different things. Um, uh, I think Ken told me that uh, his dog was upset about uh, the um, uh, lightning and thunder, and they gave him one little drop on his tongue, and it calmed him down. Or else someone told me that. I mean, that's dog great. Died. That, please, <laughs> did not. So that's great, too. There's going to be a lot of positive properties about it. And I, I don't have a problem with it as far as a product. Now, here's what I do have a problem with. And that is, um, I had some, my kids are in uh, Denver. I had some, but I, I didn't buy it from them. I had it bought through a company that sells it in upstate New York. They got it from Colorado, upstate New York, down to here. Two little vials of crystals. I mean, really small, 45 bucks. But if I can get $25 a pint, who cares? Who cares about the cost of the product? But there's no rules or, or controls on this yet. So I looked at it, and I looked at the texture, and I put it down on paper and shoved it around. And I thought, you know what? I could put uh, um, uh, bar sugar in here into the same vial and add a little vinegar. It was the first thing I came up with that wouldn't hurt anybody. So it would have a bitter taste to it. I've never even tasted the stuff, but to the person who doesn't know, it, so it wouldn't taste like sugar. It would taste like something. So I get this. It comes in the mail. Fifteen minutes later, Paula comes in from buying gas for her car, and she says, you know, they're selling B uh, CBD over at the Shell station. <laughs> I go, I went to all this effort, getting it all around the country, worrying about the feds are going to come arrest me and haul me off to a black site, and she gets it at the Shell station. My point is, there is no rules or regulations about this. This is like the, watching the old-time Western movies where the guy rolls into the town uh, you know, Dr. Dr. Charles's uh, magic elixir. How do you know what you're getting? Unless you buy it in Colorado where it's controlled, how do you know what you're getting? The, the guy at the Shell station could have been putting granulated sugar in there with a little vinegar and sold it to me for 45 bucks, and I wouldn't have known. That's my first problem. The second one, and there's no way I can be brief on this, so relax. I'm just waiting. Just relax. The second problem I have with this is... Um, there was a great book I read. It was, it was the Queen of Mulberry Street, and it was a woman who grew up, and she goes into the ISIS business. It was supposed to mimic Tom Carvel, and, uh, who I knew very well. And um, so she gets old. The grandchildren are taking over the business, and they go, hey, Grandma, we want to sell liquor ice cream in our Carvel stores, a 1,000 Carvel stores around the East Coast. And... Um, so they put it in, and the first week sales are through the roof. Fantastic, incredible. Second, third, fourth week drops down to zero. Why? Because ice cream is considered a family product, something where you bring your kids. And mothers were saying, I don't want my 14-year-old, who looks like he's 23 because he's so big and he's a football player, buying uh, rum raisin ice cream with Bacardi rum in it. And it, it hurt their business theoretically in the book because it was taking the family atmosphere away from the ice cream parlor. And I put a lot of stock in that. I'm probably going to make videos to show you how to use CBD. Uh, but am I going to recommend it? I don't know the answer. I really I do. don't. 
So go ahead. Okay, here's the deal. CBD oil, or in any form, is therapeutic. It's made for loosening joints. It's made for rubbing on your arthritic knee. It's, it's not, obviously, it's not dessert. If you put it in ice cream and start charging $25, people are going to buy it once. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to hate you because you ripped them off. You just said the gas station where you buy a little thing for forty five dollars, you go home, you're not going back there. No. So it it has no place in ice cream. What does has a have a place in ice cream is the THC laden product that is available in five states so far and will be available. I can see selling pot ice cream, that's fine. It's just like selling ice cream with booze in it. They're gonna get high from it. So that's okay, but this is a sham putting CBD oil in ice cream because it costs more money, right? You're going to sell it $25 a pint. I'm not going back to that store because I still have arthritis. That didn't help a lick. So uh, I don't think it has any place in our product, in our world, but that's just me. He's right. I'm right. One more thing about it. Um, I am always looking to see how to grow my business. It's been growing a whole lot. And I looked into uh, pan, Thai pan ice cream. That is a plate that is refrigerated, and you pour the mix on it, and then you got to play Benny Hanna on it for seven minutes, you know, moving around, doing this and rolling stuff like that. Just like... Cold uh, Stone. Yeah, sort of like Cold Stone. But it, they've, they're dealing with ice cream already made. Correct. It takes seven minutes to serve a portion. You take that times 10 people, you're standing in line for 70 minutes, and Americans will not stand in line. Every, almost every single one of the, uh, of the nitrogen places yeah. is out of business because you go the first time, it's novelty, it's great, maybe you go back a second time to show your relatives, and you never go back because I'm not going to wait 70 minutes for an ice cream cone. I'm just not going to do it. Here, so, but I, let me just finish. I, I was at the NICRA convention, National Ice Cream Retailers Association in, in Colorado, and there was a man next to me, and he was selling... Uh, the plates, the Thai pan plates that I was thinking of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And he gets $2,300 for it, really oh. cheap. He buys them for about 400 imported from uh, China. And he said he has sold about 300 of them, and very proud. And he said, and I have an order for 24 more that I'm going to place. I said, well, 300 and you're ordering 24? He said, yeah, there's only going to be 24 more sold, and then that fad is dried up. He said, that fad is not going anywhere. It's a flash in the pan, gets a lot of attention. The phone calls come pouring in. Do you make Thai pan ice cream? Yes, I can do it. Um, and then it's gone because it, it has no legs to it. And I think the CBD has no, leg, no legs to it. It's going to get a flash in the pan. If you want to do it and have it in your store and you can do it for under $1,000, you know, be my guest. But like any fad, know when to get out. You know, get a, don't spend a lot of money to get in and know when to get out because it is a fad, as opposed to the dairy-free, which to me is a trend. That was a long answer. There you go. <laughs> and I think the short answer. Already? The the nitrogen? No, I know the nitrogen already are, but the rolled ones. The seeing, rolled ones? Are you starting to Same see those? Thing. Are you hearing a rumor or anything that they're already starting to fall out? Not yet, but the sales. The, this <clears throat> this guy who was selling them said, I can't sell anymore because they're not buying them. So yes, that means it's, it's fallen off. Here's they haven't the gone deal. out of business yet, they will. Here's the deal. There's one way in the ice cream or ice business to increase your, what were you looking to increase by adding that? Your customer base? Yeah. Your, no, your, my, what? My, the machines? No. Here's how to increase your business. There's only one way. Get more customers. That's it. Yeah. The products we sell, if you guys, the, the few people who bought the book, or it doesn't matter about the book, you have 25 flavors, 25 great flavors. If that's all you ever produce, you'll be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Just keep getting more customers in. We know how to do that now, don't we? Just keep getting more customers because everybody likes it. To try to come up reinventing the wheel, it doesn't make sense. You're spinning your tires. Just... And to me, the fat-free goes in that, that case, too, because the fat-free millennials that he's describing, what is that, 5% of the market, 10% of the market, 20% of the market? You still got 80, 80% to market to and to bring into the fold. 
You think you can't get rich on 80% of this planet? Come on. So it, when you want to grow your business, just the amount of customers. Remember the bell on the door? That's all you got to worry about. The more that gongs when, people, when the door opens and closes, the more money you're making. End of story. That's it. Oh, he doesn't have fat-free ice cream. We're not going there. Oh, well, choose me. The people behind you have to get in. That's all it is. So just understand. It's so simple. It's just simple stuff. You don't need gimmicks. Gimmicks. You don't need CBD oil gimmicks. In my opinion, we differ. You don't need fat-free. You don't need lactose-free. You don't need dietetic. You don't need sugar-free. Because 90% of this planet wants what you have. What you have is full fat, full sugar, full flavor, sweet treats. That's what they want. They've wanted it since the Egyptians made ice cream out of snow. They still want it. Everybody likes ice cream or even ices. Everybody likes it. So just get more people into your place. That's all it is. Simple. Sorry. Who else? Ice cream. Oh, when you're making your sorbets or your Italian ice, can you make it without the sugar and just all natural juices? Depends no. what the juices like are. Let's say a lemon. No, no, no okay. because there's no there's no sweetness in lemon. It's it's what we in the dairy industry call solids, and solids can be dairy or they can be coconut or they can be sugar, um, and a sugar-free Italian ice don't even begin to touch it. You'll see it uh, on the market. They use a nasty product called maltodextrin. It's a modified food starch. And if you read the, if you buy Stouffer's sugar, for, I'm, a, I'm a diabetic, so I'm not supposed to have sugar. That's the other thing. We all cheat. You know, I save up. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to waste my cheating uh, being a type 1 diabetic on Breyer's ice cream. I'm waiting to have Jeff's stuff, uh, the good stuff. Uh, so I cheat. Um, but when you have sugar-free, uh, this multidextrin is a chemical and it says on the package, uh, if you buy, say, Stouffer's candies, sugar-free candies, pl uh, please only eat one or two. Well, I eat the whole bag. Who doesn't? Uh, it's like saying, please only eat one or two potato chips. Because it may have a dire, uh, dire you know, distress, stomach distress. In other words, it gives you Montezuma's revenge. It gives you the worst case of diarrhea on earth. Now, the customer says, great, I got sugar-free ice cream. They go home and have diarrhea, and they say, I didn't eat anything since last night except a cup of coffee. It must be Jeff's sugar-free Well, don't ice go cream. there. You no, know, I won't call it. It, it must be the sugar-free uh, ISIS. The keto. the keto diet? Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, on the, I'm on the keto diet. Yeah, so there's ways, is there ways around? No, because you've got Only no if the natural product is sweet. You can probably get away with maybe pineapple Italian ice without adding sugar, if you got real ripe pineapple. I haven't been able to do it. The machines are too powerful. You can do it in your little home machine that takes an hour and a half uh, to make because there's so little freezing power there that it's not going to freeze to the wall. Now, let These me things why, lock up. Why are you trying to do this? Because well, in, my, in my store, I sell to all. I find ways to sell. I sell. Well, you know, jack of all trades, things. master of none. No, I know, but like for me, I but I do snow cones too. Or so are you getting sugar-free syrup? Well, I'm not doing sugar-free. I'm just doing all natural flavor. Good. Right? Don't do sugar-free. No, I know. But I'm saying, is there ways to take that natural flavor and just make it into a short? Just give no, more customers it, who want the, the difference sugar. between Italian ice. the difference between a snow cone and an Italian ice is we have body, texture, and flavor. The flavor, it's, it's a processed product. We're taking raw ingredients and turning it into something new. No offense, because you're very successful, all, all the places are, you're just taking crushed yeah. uh, ice and pouring syrup over it. There, there's, there's no process there. There's, it's, you know, I can't take the ingredients for a cake and put it in the refrigerator and expect it to come back as a birthday cake. Mm -hmm. I have to process it. So we're, we're a whole different ball game than, uh, than shaved ice. And you when you question? put the shaved ice in, you'll still do well. But give me a, come back in a year, and I'll bet you the Italian ices are far outselling the shaved well, ice. Been selling yeah, it's it's great. Yeah. Little profit there, huh? huh? Little profit there. Uh, Who here's else? the okay. Go ahead. Who's who's got questions? Oh, I know you're all going to come up to us during lunch and say, "Hey, what about this?" So come on, to ask. Uh, us. Here's a question. 
Okay, go ahead. You were saying, you know, with pint sales and everything, do you um, take some of your ice cream, batch it up, and stick it in a freezer for people to buy in that sense as well? I don't know. You don't? No. The, remember you used to see signs, uh, hand-packed ice cream? They didn't want to go to the fr open freezer and take a pint out. They wanted it hand-packed. They wanted to watch you behind the counter, take a pint, take that big spade and jam it in there and then put the cover on it. That was hand-packed. I don't sell uh, pre-packaged ice cream uh, for a very important reason. As soon as you sell pre-packaged pints, you have to, you're in a category where you have to list the ingredients and the nutritional information on the label. And that means you have to send it out for testing and uh, analysis, uh, expensive property. Uh, on pints? Not if you sell them in your own store. If, well, yeah. if you sell them in your own store, but if they're pre-packaged no. to go, then you have to. No. No. Only if, if it's you're selling it to pints. I don't sell anything like that. I don't sell pints or quarts or anything. I, I love selling pints and quarts. Um, as far as the hand... To who? To the customers who walk in. And I'm going to explain how. Well, my you're not small set up for this. is a pint. Yeah, but you're not set up for this. But most of these people will be. My, uh, the, the hand-packed ice cream, like Jeff was saying, uh, I used to think the girl at Baskin Robbins liked me because my nickname in, in uh, school was Two Ton Thompson. And so I was not going to be attracting this lovely young lady who was doing the pints. And she was jamming the ice cream in there and could barely close the top. I thought, well, she really likes me because she's giving me all this extra ice cream. No, it's called a Chinese pint. And it will not hold a pint unless it's falling out of the container. And they have to weigh it in order to be accurate for the state. Anyway, what I like to do, based on Americans won't wait for anything, is I'm, I'm going home tonight and I need to pick up a couple of pints of ice cream at the local ice cream parlor. I'm gonna have, the ice cream parlor is gonna be set up where they're serving people ice cream and they're gonna have uh, a cabinet like that filled with, or something similar, filled with pints of ice cream. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna rush in, I'm gonna leave my engine running with the air conditioning on, they can steal the car if I want, and uh, I'm gonna rush in, I'm gonna grab two pints, and here is this takeout counter that says, Pints only. And I'm going to put them on the counter. There's nobody there. The server over here who's doing banana splits and milkshakes says, excuse me one second, I'll be right back. The server runs over, says, you want a, uh, you're paying by credit card. So runs the credit card. Do you want a receipt? No. You want a bag? No. Just like Starbucks. I just want my pints. I'm going to grab them, get back in the car, and go home. I spent about three minutes, and now I have ice cream to bring home for Paula and me. The speed of taking it out. Now, you're waiting online. And this server just said, excuse me one second, and runs over to take care of me. Your reaction, because it all happened so fast, is, wow, that means I could come in here at 6 at night and grab a couple of pints, and I don't have to wait online. And it's based on Starbucks. I hate flying because I have to go to Tampa International and wait online while all these people are ordering mocha, latte, this and that. I just want a black coffee. Why can't you have a line that just says black coffee? coffee. So that's what it is, is you have it there. You're getting eight, nine dollars a pint. That's, that's good money in our world. And, uh, and it's just grab and go. So I like him. Jeff, it doesn't fit his business model, which is a nice, polite way of saying he's absolutely wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you why I don't hey, sell pints. I'm not the one going around with a towel on my shoulder. I'll tell you why I don't sell pints. Very simple. My store is an experience, it's a destination, it's a place for people to come and enjoy a little slice of life. And they can buy pints anywhere. Uh, if you're set up to, to make pint sales part of your business, then when they're close to home or at home and they say, you know what, let's go grab some pints. And on the way, oh, I have to stop in the supermarket, oh, let's grab the pints there. Pints are pints. Ice cream is ice cream, but pints are pints. I want them to come into my store, enjoy the experience, hear the music, meet their friends, have a good time, eat some ice cream. That's what I want. And that's what made me a lot of money. Uh, Steve originally, when I sat back there the first day, Steve professed the benefits of wholesale selling of ice cream, where you 
take your ice cream and you go see the chef in the morning and he agrees to sell your ice cream and then you've got ice cream at the wazoo and all these restaurants and everything. Uh, I, that's what I did when I first sat here, just like all of you people like this. Oh, that sounds good, but it didn't work. Uh, as soon as you do it, you relinquish your identity to the restaurant. And it's not your ice cream anymore, it's their ice cream. And the way you take care of your ice cream is one way, the way they don't take care of your ice cream is their way. It's, it's a whole different deal. Uh, it's possible, you can do it, but it's very simple business. Buy your product, make the ice cream and sell it and just get more and more customers. It's, it's, it's just an easy way to go about it. No middleman. Jeff's Ice Cream Parlor is like, if you're watching this on a video, and this is why we differ, Careful. is like the movies Back to the Future. It's, it's, a, it's a destination. It's an old-fashioned type of going to sit down with my girlfriend and have some ice cream. It's dessert. Yes, it's it is. It's a treat. It, that's why it's a destination. You've got all those retired people in that community coming over, and it's their night out. It's their entertainment. I have no problem with that, but at the same time, you got, most of you are too young to know this, but McDonald's, when I was growing up, was open from 11 in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, and they sold hamburgers and cheeseburgers and fries and milkshakes, and, and that was about it. And then somebody at headquarters looked around and said, you know what? This building's sitting here all, after, all night long and all morning long, and the parking lot's here, and the electricity's here. We gotta keep everything cold. Why don't we open for breakfast? Hello, breakfast. And the whole world of fast food changed. So all I'm doing is I'm taking his little bit of nostalgia of we are a destination, we come because we like it uh, when he comes out and he's got a new flavor in here, try this, and we like the hominess of it. And I'm also adding, but I can also bring value, uh, additional money coming in because I'm still paying $3,000 a month, and I can uh, augment that with different ways of selling ice cream. So we're both right. You know, there's no question about it. I just don't see it as additional money. I see it as substitute money. Whether you get it this way or that way, it's the same dollar. Whether they take a pint to go or they come in and sit and eat it, same dollar. Well, I'm, What you need to do is get more people. I'm developing a... Uh, I'm bringing back our machine from 1923 and 1995, the frozen custard machine. And so by bringing in a whole different machine, I'm going to get more people. So under your theorem, I would just stay with you know, a, no, a 24 quart. I'll buy one. <laughs> I would say with one machine and just say I'll sell the one machine to the world. You have to have a little bit of variety. Uh, but it brings up a good point, and then we can start breaking for lunch. And that is if you do expand out into different areas, make sure it makes sense. When someone calls me up and says, I'm going to add uh, hot dogs to my ice cream. Why? Well, because the, hot, the ice cream's going so well, I know that I can, um, I can augment that by selling sandwiches and, and hot dogs in my store. I say, oh, great. Uh, call me back in a month and let me know how much you want to sell your machine back to me for. I'll give you, you know, five cents on the dollar uh, because you're going to go broke. Well, what do you mean? Well, I said, number one, your reputation is ice cream. Now you're adding... You're adding hot dogs. That's that's what's that's what Friendly's did. They added cold sandwiches. Then they added hot sandwiches. Then they added meatloaf. And then all of a sudden, hey, we ought to open up an ice cream parlor in this town. Nobody sells ice cream because Friendly's becomes known as and Swenson's. The same thing happened. Uh, but also with hot dogs, the grease in the air. Ice cream is a protein. Anything you cook is going right into that protein, the dairy. So your ice cream is going to taste like. Uh, Hebrew National <laughs> hot dogs in about three days. I mean, it's a killer. And, I, and people call up and they say, oh, what are you going to sell? I'm going to sell hot dogs and ice cream and, and burgers and fries. I say, let me give you the phone number for Capigiani. I, I, I don't have time to talk to you. You know, love you, but here's Capigiani's phone number. Go talk to them because you're going to fail. And when you make your uh, gallons, how many gallons, do you, when you make your ice cream, how many gallons? Is it one gallon, two gallons, three gallons, or? What, what a batch is? Yeah, what is your batch? A batch is six or seven gallons. Okay, how many scoops do you usually get out of, like... I get ten scoops, scoops per gallon. Ten scoops per gallon. Depends on the size of the scoop. It's 128 ounces. If you're selling eight ounces, you're going to get 13. If you're selling four ounces, you're going to get 26. Right, so I, I sell 
uh, the girls at my store pack it in. Our cups are 12 ounces, and they're putting 16 in there. 16. Yeah, that's right. 16. They're giving out pints for six dollars. Yes, sir. You say you're bringing back your custard machines, um, but these machines have a setting for a custard, right? Yes, these uh, the the especially the smaller ones will do custard. Custard is a low 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 air content product uh, that's 10 percent, sometimes 12 percent fat and the addition of 3.2% egg yolk by volume. Fancy way of saying it's got egg yolks in it. That is the definition of custard. But custard, as it's sold in the Midwest, is a, uh, a continuous freezer. It's constantly, it's a narrow tube, only four inches as opposed to these. And it's constantly going through that tube and constantly going down the chute. So a major part of it is that it's visual. That would you, be you culvers, ju you right? just That's culvers. You just turn it on and let it run all day long. And it's a lot of that visualness of it that, that makes it great. Also, ice cream fresh out of the machine is always fantastic. So you're getting ice cream that was made a few seconds ago. So is there any difference in, in the, so let's say the 24 quart, is there any difference in taste to the custard as opposed to a, you know, a custard machine? Uh, yes, the custard machine will actually go to lower air content than a batch freezer can do. Uh, we get very close with it, but if someone was going to order a 24 or a 44 just to make custard, I would say you need to switch machines because you're doing so much volume, you ought to be the constant flow coming out. I'm hungry. <laughs> yes? Yeah, the, uh, one of the things I wanted to do, I, I'm going to do his model, but one of the things I wanted to do was, for instance, uh, our local Boy Scouts, because I'm a Scoutmaster as well, that uh, for their fun drives, if, if I package my, my ice cream in pints for them to sell, <clears throat> I mean, I'm crossing a line here somewhere with the packaging where I'm no longer retail and so on. I'm in another one. You are crossing a line because you're taking it out of the building and you're selling it. You, you might as well take it to the supermarket because you've taken it out of the building and now you're going to fall under the laws of labeling. And Which so, isn't impossible. No. It's just another step you have to do. It That's used all. to be impossible. But now so many people do it that there's whole testing labs. You just send your product to it. They actually burn it. BTUs is a measure of uh, how much heat is given off when you burn a product. And so they're going to actually burn your ice cream and figure out how many calories in this, and then they're going to list the ingredients and what percentages and all. And if you were going to do, sell anything to a supermarket or a bodega or a deli or anything like that, I would go to the expense of putting the labeling on because everybody reads labels. I, I read a label and it says, this is 940 calories, and I say, expletive deleted, <laughs> and then start eating it because I wanted it anyway. <laughs> but I feel really bad for myself that, gee, I'm eating 940 calories. I could, be, I, I could have like 17 protein shakes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we do it anyway. We, 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 uh, another one that, uh, here, here's a fad for you that, thank goodness, is going away. And I, I got the word on this one uh, back in uh, July that Halo will be out of business shortly. And they will. Halo Top? Yeah. What a horrible... What Halo Top ice cream, I showed you that once. It's 90% it's oh, right, air right, right. and the rest is chemicals. Mm. And they sold it based on gluttony. Oh, you can eat the whole pint for 210 calories. Well, it's the most god-awful tasting stuff on earth. Uh, they're being sued right now, and I would go to their defense, surprisingly. It was transported from their factory to the supermarket, and when people opened it up, it was only half full. Oh, they're cheating us. No, the trucker turned off the reefer truck, it warmed up, and the air just all disappeared, and that's how much was really only in there. It was about a quarter full. The rest was air. But it's a horrible tasting product. They are now down from a shelf space, which drove all of us crazy in the business. We're trying to sell quality, and they're selling gluttony. And it went from this to this to this. They got offered $1.2 billion last spring, and they'll be lucky if they get 10 cents for that company. And it deserved it, in my opinion. Somebody's going to sue me for this. Right. They're, they deserve I, it. I think everything's great. It's my personal yeah. opinion. They're going to get sued for it because uh, it's, it's just it's awful stuff. Anyway, how about lunch? Oh, yes. Jeff, do you have um, flash freezes? No, I don't. 
You don't. No. You use um, what do you use? You haven't been watching my videos. You know, this is where we get out the boxing gloves and start, you know, okay. bring the towel. No, no, no need for it. No. no. Need okay. for it. no. So what you make you ice cream Monday, you sell it Tuesday. You make ice cream Friday, you sell it Saturday. That's it. End of story. And put the six to nine thousand dollars in the bank. And call me two months after doing that, and tell me uh, when you bought your hardening cabinet. You won't because buy one. We do not agree at all. You're not going to buy one. He is when selling. You make it that it doesn't crystallize? You know, crystallize? That, well, get ice crystals more in it? No. Because, answer, answer, does it? No. Of course not. It doesn't. But why? It doesn't because he's only keeping it for 24 hours. Gelaterias went out of business in the United States because they used his European model. He doesn't know it's European model. It's European model. Of make the stuff this morning, sell it this afternoon, sell it tomorrow, and you're done. Ice cream will keep for three days without crystallizing. After that, the ice crystals start showing up, uh -uh. and he doesn't keep it around nope. that long. No, it won't. He doesn't. How long do you keep your ice cream? I can keep ice cream a month, and it's as good as the day I made it. No, it didn't. Because I've done it here all the time. Huh? Anyway, we're not going to get into that one. You can go oh, back come and on. watch. Let's get the you boxing gloves on. You can watch a million videos. Uh, all I'm saying is 99% of you will own a hardening cabinet Save within your a year. money. Within a year. Put it with the money you saved from buying a glass top dipping cabinet. How many freezes do you have? When you, when you make ice cream and you put it in a freezer, you can put probably five or six tubs in there, and overnight it'll go down in temperature. But that's if you right. fill that up, and that's what I'm not going to take the BTUs out of it. Absolutely, and that's what I do. I fill it up a third of the way. He's okay. got what, 15? What? How many of those? 15? Uh, 13 freezers. 13 freezers. His electric bill is. His oh, no, it thing isn't. is going no, around no, like no. this. Very small compressor, very tiny motor in him. No, and a lot of heat. Yeah. No, no, no. What do you dip up? Let's go into another story. <laughs> if you want, if you want to save, how much money do you think you saved in these two days that you took for class? Thousands, right? Yes. Many thousands of dollars. It just it, it's so simple. Can we it's, talk about that for a minute? What? Your class. Really? Yeah. Oh, what about it? Well, I get. I'm involved with a lot of people worldwide. We're in 171 countries, and I get asked to endorse all sorts of things. And I don't endorse anything that I don't absolutely, truly love because it's my reputation. And if it's going to make my customers have a better experience with their machines, and it, you know, it's those of you who know Rush Limbaugh says the whole purpose of the radio program is to make him look good. Well, me endorsing things is to make me look good because if I tell you something good, uh, like buy a global uh, blast freezer, <laughs> you, you, you'll and you'll do well. Um, Jeff's class, if you're just watching this on video, is two days uh, before my class. We always do mine on Wednesday. Mine, it's ours. Jeff and I do this class on Wednesday, and as if you noticed, it's for free. Um, those of you who put, you all put down a deposit, and you're going to get it back as soon as you uh, leave here today, just to get you to show up. Um, this, his class, the way I put it is, I can teach you how to make uh, mint chip ice cream, how to maintain the machine, uh, how to uh, help lay out your store. I can do all that. What Jeff's class does is if an ice cream cone costs three dollars, how much should a banana split cost? And yes, I know he's not doing banana splits, but he's breaking it down to the nuts and bolts. I joke about it when people call. I say, you're going to be waiting on tables. You're going to be making ice cream. You're going to be waxing his Corvette. Well, may, all right, maybe you won't wax the Corvette. Now he's got the Volkswagen. Uh, but it's going to be so hands-on, and that's what everybody asks for. People call up and say, where can I go to a hands-on class? This class, which I think were very helpful, is not hands-on. None of you, uh, except the lady who showed us how to grate the lemons, has touched the machines today. You're still going to get a lot out of it, but it's not the whole picture. Uh, Jeff charges for his class. It's a, it's, a, it's a fair rate, especially when you look at uh, the other classes that are out there. And it's clean and simple. We, there we are have other our districts. Uh, some in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have uh, our disagreements. You know, he, he, he's dead wrong, and I'm absolutely right. Uh, but he is a spectacular teacher. He, he makes everything very simple. So if you're looking to get into the business, the best thing you can invest in is 
you know, buy a machine from me, but don't buy it four months in advance and tell me that you're going to experiment with 15 different variations of vanilla. Just put some vanilla into the ice cream, a generous amount, and it'll be spectacular. Done. Finished. Buy the machine, you know, a month before you open up. Jeff's class, you can't get enough knowledge. If you can get sources of knowledge, read a book uh, on ice cream. Uh, read a boring book on ice cream and say, do I really need to know all this? Uh, but Jeff's class is going to help you well, here, a whole lot. Here's what the class is. It's two days. I, I don't think I've ever done it. We've been doing this years. Done I've never talked about it. No. Uh, but here it is. It's, I couldn't remember your name. It's, that was why. It's two days uh, very full days. We, we start at 9, we go maybe till 6, 7, or 8 o'clock at night whenever we're done. Uh, but I think the key is that it's in a working store. I've looked at other classes and they're in a convention room or a hotel room or a, a classroom. Uh, but this is a working store. As a matter of fact, where's Connor? Connor last night, after class ended about 7 o'clock, uh, he put an apron on and went behind the counter and was serving customers. And he did great. But that experience is invaluable. But I'll teach you, because it's simple, simple business. I'll teach you where to find the store. Because I have a number uh, for the rent. And that's it. Don't go over it. It's easy. The first thing we talked about, it's easy to find the best place to open the store. It's very easy to find that. You go to the busiest shopping center, the prettiest one on the mainest road you got, in the heart of the best city, and you know that's the best place to open a store. But you're going to pay seven, dollars $8,000 a month. And that's going to put you out of business. You can't afford it. We're selling a $5 product. It's kind of simple. So you can't do it. You can't get that many customers initially. So there's a formula for where to find your store. And it's a great formula. And that'll teach you where the store should be. Then what do you put in it? How do you supply the store? And all the equipment you need, all the equipment you don't need. Then how to make the ice cream and the ices and the cream ice. How do we do it? So every person who, took, who takes the class, and there have been hundreds, makes the product themselves. The first day they make it with a, 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 another person. Second day they each make ice cream solo on an Emory 24. From beginning to end, they make the ice cream. I like it because I've got a bunch of workers for that week. So they make all the ice cream. And now, this year, we've added something very new to the class. It's spectacular, if I have to say so. All the people who've graduated this class, they're all in business. Probably 95% of them are in business all around the world. There's a network for all these people now. It's a Facebook page that's private. And you have to get invited to every day hundreds of them are talking about all the issues that come up in every phase of the operation in finding a location in making ice cream in creating recipes uh getting customers doing your marketing every phase of the business because they're all involved in it it's like all of you opening a store and being networked on a, on a website it's terrific I mean, I read them all day, uh, and you will too. Did you sign up already? Did you get Okay. Uh, and that's brand new, and that's terrific. All the people who've gone through it have the same issues that you're going to have, same questions that you're going to have. So you just go on there and ask them, hey, who's got a recipe for this? Hey, how did you do this? Your location, what's the traffic? What's the signage? What's the, what kind of shirts do you sell? Ba 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 ba. So it's everything. And if you just keep in mind the simplicity of this business, buy the ingredients, bring them to your location, that'll cost you $1,200 a month. That's the number. $1,200 a month. That's your rent. And that's it. And I can find it in every city in the world in one day because there's a trick to it. Find, bring it to your location. Make the ice cream. Hopefully you'll be smart enough to make this machine first and not waste your money beforehand, but eventually you'll have this machine. Make the ice cream and then bring in customers. And we've got a foolproof way to bring in customers and have them repeat. So it's a simple business. The hardest part of this business is managing your money because you're going to have a lot of it. And that's it. It's a two-day class. Very simple. It's always the Monday and Tuesday before we work here. 
Now, those of you who are wondering, who are watching this on YouTube, how hard is it to make ice cream? Jeff just said something that really struck me. He said, I'm going to have you making the ice cream. You're going to make it from start to finish. Do you think he would risk this successful business to someone who's never made ice cream before if he didn't trust the fact that this is easy to do? How simple was it making ice cream on your own? You each made ice cream on your own. How simple was it? It's actually silly simple, isn't it? You think it's, it's much harder, much more involved, but it's not. And he's tried. I wouldn't let you. We made rum raisin last night. Would I sell rum raisin in my store that, who made it? Who made the rum raisin? You made it, Connor. Would I sell Connor's rum raisin ice cream in my store if I thought it wasn't 100% of what I make? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. And that's a very popular flavor, rum raisin ice cream. So they've made all the flavors, and I like it. They, they're my little workers for those two days. Uh, I teach them. They make ice cream for me, so I don't have to slave over the machine. All That's night. a deal. It's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? All right, let's break for lunch. Let's break for lunch. <laughs> Might as well. All right. The gate's open. Okay, so we'll make some ice cream. You want to say anything? No, I was going to say something about the gate being open. I decided it was not really discreet. You know I'm not going to go that way. It was not really a good idea. Okay, so uh, I made cream ice before because he started with Italian ices, and I thought we'd introduce a... By the way, here's what I was originally going to do. He made Italian lemon Italian ices his first thing, right? You tasted it. It was pretty good. You know that all you have to do is add one quart of mix, wherever he put it, into that Italian ice, and you'll have Italian cream ice. And it'll be just like the cream ice we had, only it'll be, I'm sorry, lemon. You'll have lemon cream ice, and, and it'll be terrific. So any Italian ice recipe you have can be easily made into cream ice by just introducing some cream. Uh, and they're all good. Like I said, my friend Evan, if you want to see the flavors, his name, name of his place, and he's online, is Cecily's Gourmet Italian Ices. He calls it Gourmet Italian Ices, even though he doesn't sell Italian Ices. He sells cream ice exclusively. Hundreds of flavors. But there's an educating the public situation here. If you open up the store and it says, lose cream ice, forget it, you're done. <laughs> You'll close up in a week, because nobody knows what that is. So there's, a, there's a, an education process that goes on. So he decided to call it gourmet Italian ices. And that works a little bit. I mean, it works for him, but it's, a, it's not totally false. It, they are gourmet ices, sort of. Okay, so now, was it in the class that we talked about the, um, the caramel crunch? Uh, we, I think we, I think we in the book, uh, in the book that, that we have, there's a recipe that was one of my original recipes uh, because when I went to the supermarket, as Kelly and I were talking about, originally I found a can of Nestle's La Lechera. It's dulce de leche. Uh, and it's, it's like caramel, almost. So I bought a couple of cans and I experimented making a a recipe, and it turned out pretty good. So we'll make that now. It's, uh, I call it Caramel Crunch. Uh, and my card here, you should all buy these index cards and a $19 laminator on uh, Amazon and have all your formulas there in a card box. That's simple. Simple. Keep it simple. Keep this business simple. It's a simple business. I'm a simple guy. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, close the gate, put something under it. Ah! Ah! Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me back there? Yes, we can. Okay, because I just dropped this unit on the floor. <laughs> How much was this unit when it was new? 38000 Okay, well, I'm in the hole then. 
but you can still hear me, right? I can hear you. Okay, then I'm going to proceed. Uh, what were we doing? Caramel crunch. Caramel crunch. crunch. We're going to uh, add the mix to the machine. However, uh, the recipe calls for some sugar. So what we'll do is first we'll add the mix to the machine. Not turned on yet. And we're adding five quarts because, oh, hello, because my machine would be, my recipe is 10 quarts, but this is a 12-quart machine. You know where we're going with this, right? Okay. All right. So that's the mix. Now we have the sugar. So where's the best mixer in the room? Why, it's right there. So let's turn it on. 234 RPMs, and we'll add the sugar. The dulce de leche, this is the, the part that I wasn't prepared for today. If we were in my kitchen at the store, what would we do? We would take this, these little kit. It only comes in these little cans. They're 13.4 ounces, and you have to buy them in these little cans. If it came in one of those things, that would be great, just one shot. But you have to buy it in these. So in my recipe, it calls for 10 of these little cans, these little 13-ounce cans. But this will use five. You, you, you know where. Right? Now, if, if we were back at the store, I would do this in a bowl. I would have done this before, and we would have a nice bowl, and I would just shoot it right in. But there's, you're working under such a handicap here in this store, in this place. Got a dog running around. I mean, come on. So, so we'll put these individually in the machine. It'll be probably messy. It won't be as easy. This is where the drill comes in. Piece of cake, right? Put it in a bowl with some mix, put the drill on, zip, pour it in. Easy. So it's going to look harder now. Go away. Uh, this is not going to be fun. See, now it's not, <laughs> it's not going down. Uh, we have to smoosh it down. This is, this is going to be uh, a big pain. Uh, but it is what it is. Normally, if you were doing this, you would, night, you would have a thinner spatula, and you would whoop, one shot into a bowl. You would put all these five in a bowl, add a little mix, take this $3 invention that we have, and zip it up and pour it in. Be easy. Not easy. Ugh. Well, not too bad. Err. That's one. At least we only have five. So what do you want to do while I'm doing this? What? No. No. As soon as it goes in, it's dissolved. It's getting the stuff in there. Then. Ah. Okay, we're two fifths the way through. Not too bad. You know, in our net last segment when we were talking about your class. Yes. We forgot to say what it's called and where it's located. A sign right there. Yeah. It's. Um, called Ice Cream Boot Camp, and it's in Fruit Loops. Oh. What's the town called? Fruitland, Fruitland Park. Fruitland Park, 
Florida. Beautiful Fruitland Park, Florida. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach Jeff at his very convoluted email address that you'll get wrong unless well, you know how to you're spell really it. You're really helping me, aren't you? It's, it's xhippie at AOL.com, but he, um, he's from the 60s, so he doesn't know how to spell. Uh, hippie, it's X and then H-I-P-P-E-E -E at AOL. Uh, a much simpler way to remember would just do Steve at EmeryThompson.com, and we'll get you over to Jeff. Steve at EmeryThompson.com, and we'll get you the information for Jeff's class. <laughs> the left-handed promo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with friends like me. <laughs> right. So this is pretty good. We're four-fifths the way through. Four Whoa! Away. Somebody new came to the class. Yes. <laughs> Did she pay the full amount? Or? She paid extra to sit up front. She was actually in the bleacher seats. You just didn't see back that far. Okay. Is Sammy going to bother you? If she does, I can take that. Anybody out. have a dog allergy? <laughs> if we do, you're thrown out. When we hire people here, whether they're for the office or the factory, because Sammy's all over the place, we have them sit in the front entrance for about five minutes. They think they're waiting for me. Uh, it's actually we send Sammy out to them and see how they react. If they're all like this, they're never going to work here. Uh, because we have Sammy everywhere. My brother-in-law brings in his golden retriever, so uh, she's everywhere. And um, we did have, Ken had a, a, a uh, and you're uh, worried about nuts? Yeah, and you're worried about nuts. Yeah, the nuts are in the building. They're not in the ice cream. There's long-haired beasts roaming the area where you're eating ice cream. All right, now the other thing I added, now you don't have to, but I thought we'd play with this. This is caramel ice cream, but caramel crunch. So the crunch, what would be a good crunch? Who said it? Heath Bar. Heath Bar, what a great addition to caramel ice cream. So I brought Heath Bar pieces. Once again, the Heath Bar factory uh, used to throw these away. Wow. On the floor, just like the, the crumbs from the cookies and the everything, they used to throw them away. Now they package them and sell them to idiots like me who pay more money to have them broken up. It's not less money? No, it's more. Wow. It's what a world, huh? Yeah. Why don't you put them in a bag and run them over with your Corvette? Stomp. <laughs> Obviously, I don't drive a Corvette. It's not running anymore? I don't have a Corvette. You got rid of it? I, I did. Wow. For the Volkswagen. I have a Beetle. Yeah, a beautiful one. OK, so these are Heath Bar pieces. And I see that my old recipe called for three pounds of Heath Bar pieces, but we'll use half of that. So here we go. You know this has to be good. Look what we've put in the machine. We have a mix of semi-sweet and thick and creamy. We have five cans of this gooey caramel, and we have a pound and a half of Heath Bar pieces. Died and went to heaven. This is unbelievable. And, and it's going to make ice cream out of it. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So that's it. Everything's in there. No. no. Uh, what we buy crushed up? No, no. When the you machine? Put it in the machine, it kind of crunches it up more, doesn't it? What it does, it does the same thing with chocolate chips. 
if you want chocolate chip ice cream or coffee chip ice cream, you're going to throw the chips in there. They make little chips and they make big chips. If you use the little chips, they maintain their integrity. The chips stay as little chips, mini chips. Yeah. If you use the big chips, some of them get whacked. But that only creates little mini, mini chips. It's all good. It all works. Because you don't want an ice cream that's too uniform. You want, don't forget, we make homemade ice cream. If you go to the supermarket and you buy, heaven forbid, Briars chocolate chip ice cream. Yes, every chip is going to be every chip. But in our world, it's homemade ice cream. So a little bit of chip breakage is okay, in my opinion. That's all. I'm saying you don't save something to throw on the top while it's coming out. No, I'm not a throw on top kind of guy. Because, why do you throw them on top? Visual. Visual. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in visual. I want a taste sensation. Cold, sweet, flavorful, mm, that's what I want. Now, the people who use those, those, the foolish people who use those glass top 16 I know you guys don't go to me. No, I know. We, we discovered our, our road. Yeah. The foolish people who use those 16 tub glass top opening dipping cabinets who are totally insane they want to decorate the tops of their tubs. Now, you've seen it, right? You walk into a store, oh, look how pretty. There's little things on top of that, that tub of ice cream. In the beginning, then the kids go to work. And then the tub looks like nauseous because they don't clean up. They don't scrape the sides of the tub down. They don't clean the white area between the tubs. They're kids, what do they know? They have no work ethic. So it looks like junk and it's a detriment to your ice cream. What's the one thing that'll hurt ice cream faster than anything else? Air. Air, air the moisture in the air. So when you have a 12 tub dipping cabinet with, I might add, something called a sneeze guard, you open it up to, to dip the ice cream, so you open it up now all those tubs are getting air wafting across them, hurting them, destroying the integrity of that ice cream. And you're scooping this one, and oh, a little bit fell, I don't worry about it. And you're scooping and scooping, and now you take it, put it on the counter, close that. Now what did you just seal into the ice cream? All that air and moisture. And while you're working here, it's destroying your ice cream. And then you go home at night and you silly cover them. That it, damage is done already from covering them. And the kids don't cover them anyway. They just, ah, eh, screw it. Uh, whatever. Oh, vanilla, good point. <laughs> I also think it's one of the reasons that... I poured uh, it. The reasons that gelato failed. What? <laughs> That's why. See, had we had, you know, if this were our store, we wouldn't have forgotten this, would we? And the sugar? Sugar's in there. We put the sugar in, right? Yeah. There you go. I think one of the reasons that gelato failed was because the Italians make a big effort talking about, you know, decorating the, the tub. Uh, the one reason they do that, mainly Capigiani, is they're taking the most negative thing about their machine and trying to turn it into a positive. They don't have a big gate like this where everything comes out in 25 seconds. They have these bars in the way. Uh, I, I have smarter engineers. We designed a guard that you still can't get your fingers in there, but it does not block the discharge in the least. So they take that negative of the bars and they say, oh, and a nice, it comes out so slowly out of the machine that you can decorate it as it's coming down. Well, as Jeff said, once your employees start scooping into it, it doesn't look so hot. So uh, the advantage is lost. Also, when you're making ice cream, imagine, you know, I compare this to an oven, your oven at home. If you're broiling a steak, and that steak's medium rare in uh, 10 minutes, you want to open up that door, get that steak out so it doesn't keep cooking. If it takes you a minute and a half to pull that steak out. I'm really slow. I'm just going to slowly take that steak out, like a Capigiani machine where you're slowly getting the ice cream out. 
The first half of that steak is medium rare. The last half of it is charred because it's still in the oven. The wow. oven's still hot. It's still in the batch freezer. It's still spinning around, changing the air content. So speed is important in, in making ice cream. And that's why we have always had these huge openings here. And also they can't put, they have a big opening up top, but it comes down to that. Uh, all the Italians use the same cover. I mean, no matter who the company is, they all look the same. Big fun funnel top and a little tiny opening like that. So if you want to use those, uh, if you want to use whole cookies, you have to crush them to put them in. I just stand here and I just throw in whole cookies, whole bananas. You know, it, it makes a better product. It makes life easier. So that's why it's so simple. Whatever it, it you can so think of as far as the ingredients and drugs, throw it in the machine. Let the machine do all the work. And it makes ice cream. It freezes. Uh -oh. it, it, it freezes it faster than, than you can imagine. It's it's just you'll know sooner or later you'll know. Yeah. One little trick I yes I'll give you a second. One little trick I buy a cheap spaghetti colander and I put it in my sink because if I just made Oreo cookie ice cream, you know ninety eight percent of the cookies are going to the ice cream. Maybe two percent or one percent are still in the machine. So if I've got some cookies in here, I don't want to throw them down the drain. It's going to clog the drain. I'll have the plumber coming once every two weeks. So you just pour your wastewater through a spaghetti colander and catch them, and uh, they don't go down the drain. It's, it's uh, real simple. Yes? Do we have time now? What? To talk about the infant overrun control? Uh, well, I'm almost ready. I'll wait till he's. Two minutes? Oh, easy. Go ahead. OK. The infant overrun is something I invented uh, 16 years ago. Um, yeah. And what, I, what it is, is it's a speed control. If you have your dining room and your lights are nice and bright like this and you want to have a nice romantic dinner, you dim those lights down and you're taking the, hot, uh, the, the 100 watt bulbs, you're dimming them down to a romantic 25 watts. You have taken the power away from the light bulbs. So if I took that dimmer and put it on the machine, my goal is to um, if, if, I'm, if I'm making ice cream uh, and I uh, stir this with a whisk, if I put cream in here and stir with a whisk, as fast as I spin it with my hand, it's going to remain heavy cream. If I take an electric mixer and put it in here, boom, whipped cream. So I'm going just the opposite here. I make, have always made whipped cream machines, you know, high air content, what we call homemade ice cream. And then Super Premium comes along, gelato, frozen custard, uh, frozen yogurt, all these products, we want less air in them. By spinning the drive slower, we put less air in. I call it the infinite overrun because you can have any number, any speed you want on this thing. Uh, so you take a light dimmer switch for the dining room and put it on the machine. And now that three horsepower motor is only an eighth of a horsepower because you've dimmed it down so much. <coughs> With my invention, uh, when I dim down the motor, I don't lose the torque or pulling power. My three horsepower motor at 100 RPMs is the same pull as it is at 234. And that's, that's the invention, that's what changed the whole industry and that's why we're the uh, leader in the industry, that and we build machines that last for decades, not, not eight years. When we take you out on the factory floor, you'll see the construction where I was talking with the gentleman in the front. We use all copper tubing, which, you know, who cares? Well, uh, it's nine times more expensive than aluminum. And aluminum makes for a great bridge. You can build a beautiful bridge out of aluminum, but when you expose aluminum to Freon gas, it rots out in eight years. Your Capigiani, your Taylor, Taylor's out of the batch freezer business, I ran them out. Uh, Electrofreeze, Stolting, Technogel, they're all using aluminum tubing and they all will have a lifespan of eight years. And if you don't believe me, just go look on eBay. You'll see 150 cap, uh, Italian machines for sale and not one Emory Thompson because we go 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 35 years, depends on how you take care of it. But we talk in decades, they talk in, in, in uh, eight years. So it's, it's, it's a lot of differences. But these doors, you'll see how they're made. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, solid castings uh, of stainless steel.
Tell them, guys. Tell them when it's ready. When it holds a peak. Or if you don't understand the peak, if you can open it and close it quickly and it cuts off like a knife went through it, it's ready. Jeff watch, pulls a little softer it, than I do. Watch when it comes out. You see the peak on top, it, the little mountain? Now it's dissolving into it, not ready yet. But when that peak stays as a, a mountain top, it's ready. So different ice not? creams have different times to yeah. make it. So why not a timer? Why not put a timer? Because different ice creams have different e times. Every product you make has a different time. The higher the sugar content, the longer the freezing time. Ice cream, eight minutes. Italian ice, uh, eighteen minutes on the bigger machines. Fourteen over here. If I had a timer that was going to go off eight minutes all the time, I'd always have to come back and turn it back on because the product wouldn't be ready. It gives you the discretion of the timing. Um, I, I, I put a uh, invention on which uh, Capigiani stole. They called it the Hardomatic. I just called it a, an amp meter. They call it the what? Hardomatic. Hardomatic? Yeah, I didn't make it up. They now call it the Hardomatic. You know, some guy invented that. Yeah, well, they changed it after 20 years and called it the Hardotronic. Not much better. Anyway, it's an amp meter. You'll understand this. Um, we, As you make the ice cream, it gets thicker, the amperage on the motors go up, and you can measure that on a meter. So I invented this thing where Okay, it gets to 9 amps, the vanilla's ready. It gets to 12 amps, the uh, uh, salted caramel's ready. And it was a great idea, but everybody said, why bother? All I had to do is just open it and close it like Jeff's doing, and I can tell if the ice cream's ready. You know, I was overthinking the concept. Speaking, oh, go ahead. No, that's all right. Speaking of salted caramel, big, started in California, moved across the country, salted caramel ice cream, very big. To take this ice cream and make it salted caramel ice cream, what do we add? Butterscotch. Hello. Uh, we add salt. We add kosher salt, coarse kosher salt to the ice cream, and then you have salted caramel. Simple business, simple people. <laughs> it is. It's, it, it's, it, it's true. Oh, gosh, no. 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 In fact, we build these for the United States Navy. We're on all the aircraft carriers. They cool themselves using salt water. We, we, we do everything. I personally think you could put rocks in yeah, there. Yeah, a condenser. I, do. Uh, I, I have to change uh, just the water here, condenser. And nothing's going to happen. Oh, well, uh, to something well, a little. I mean, you didn't change the coil from copper. No. Salt water. No. Uh -uh. No, but the instruction book cost $17,000. We didn't write it, but that, that, that's your government working for you. A $5 instruction book cost $17,000. The last time we built for the military they, is that machine in the back there. That's a batch freezer with a hardening cabinet attached. They came into the factory. We were building 50 of them. And they sat down with us and said, well, we're concerned about this contract you're working on. Uh, OK, what's the problem? We're delivering on time. No, we're afraid you're not going to make deliveries that you're going to go bankrupt. Why would we go bankrupt? Well, you're just not charging enough for the machine. <laughs> That's your government. And we said, don't worry about it. We're just trying to cover a little overhead. We gave you a bargain. You know, it, it was no bargain. It was the uh, usual pricing. But uh, that, that's the way the government works. But a $17,000 instruction manual had instructions on it where to put C4 within the machine to blow it up. It takes about two pounds to blow this thing up, according to the government. Nutty. Oh, died and gone to Isn't heaven. Isn't that something? We're not going to give this to them. We got to keep it. That is. Oh, man. The, mm. Well, it was nice seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you leave it on, yes, it will shut itself down. And now you have to open it up and take it all out. If you, on the old machines, what we found people were doing is uh, they would lock it up because, quite frankly, you're supposed to be in here making ice cream. You're not supposed to be talking on the phone with your friends. You're not supposed to be, um, you know, waiting on uh, people at the front counter. You say, 
folks, I'll see you in three hours. I'm going to go make ice cream. That's your job. Just like in a restaurant, the chef's job. He doesn't go out and schmooze while he's cooking the Chateaubriand. Um, so if you freeze it up, it'll shut itself down. No harm, no, no foul, no harm. Um, in the old machines, without the infinite overrun control, if you tried to restart it, all of a sudden you got five, three horsepower motor trying to start against a heavy load with all the pulling power in the back, the torque, all coming from the back. And rather than have you destroy the transmission, we had you break a plastic coupling. And so then they'd have to change the coupling. A little bit of a pain in the neck. Nowadays, with the infinite overrun control, the advantage we have of electronics is uh, your employee freezes it up, they, they call you up, and, he, and you tell them to open it up and take it all out. And instead of that, they just come back and push the button. It's cleared itself, and now it tries to start up. It immediately shuts itself down. It measures there's too much load, and uh, it's smarter than you. So uh, you can't hurt the machine. You, you cannot hurt it. Eventually, it will start back up if it thaws enough. If you look at some of my videos, I kind of uh, you know, stand here like this and talk to people waiting for it to thaw. Yes, I could get it to start up, but you can't. Because I got a factory full of parts and I don't want you breaking something. But eventually it would. But that's not the right answer. The right answer is take, open the door, take it out, and then yell at the employee. Tell them next time you do it, we'll break your kneecaps. So, should we try it? It's ready. All right. Hey, we're not going to have time for but one more flavor. That's probably. okay. It's all right? Yeah. Now, what about this strollin'? It's in the freezer. <laughs> what did you call it? It's strollin'? Stolen. Stolen. Strollin'. Let me, stolen. Stolen. How are we going to cut this up? Oh, it, it's not going to be rock hard. There's two books left. Somebody it, didn't want a book? It won't be rock hard. Don't worry. Wow. Okay, you want to try this? I guarantee, how's this? I guarantee this will be the best ice cream you've ever tasted in your life. Whoa! Better than the Baileys? Whoa. Oh, that was ice. This will be the best ice Which? cream you've ever tasted oh, yes. in your life. If they're not frozen solid. <laughs> yeah, that fast. Don't ask my hot pot. I'll have to see if I can do it afterwards because I have to make another flavor. It's going to be a little hard. Yes. I have been work in the coming season plant. I've worked in Caterpillar, uh -huh. and I have never seen a machine built to that standard. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. What a compliment. Wow. Now, what am I doing with this thing? Well, what are you doing? Adding it to your... But how? What do you mean, how? I gotta slice it. Slice it? We'll slice it and put it in the machine. All right. right. I'll take a small Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Lou, you're retired now, you know? Isn't it funny, the older we get, the longer we want to live? That's true. Well, it's getting shorter. That's the only reason. Well, of course. Yeah, I got a friend that won't be Okay. I sat in the back of the room, that's all. I don't know. Does it appear that we're good friends? Really? Excellent. I want to tell him that. Hi. How are you? Yeah, right. Good. I get it. <laughs> for my wife. <laughs> oh, this is good stuff. You know what? I made a decision. It's now going to be right on the menu. Back on the menu. It's too good. And I have no doubt where this is going on the list. It's so is this considered ice cream? Is it considered an ice cream? Yeah. It is, in fact, an ice cream. Okay. It's the real thing. It's the real deal. <laughs> you are the real deal. Thank you. Small just means you'll be back later for more. Thank you. I'm very excited for this one. Thank you for making it.
<laughs> no, I'm glad. I just told uh, uh, Fernando that this is going right back on the menu. I think it's that good. No, How is that, Kelly? Too. So I don't want you guys to think that we're talking that I'm bored with you. Where are you going? I have to fly. I have to leave. I have to leave the flight. Don't think that I think you're boring or anything. <laughs> there you go. I guess so. What's the name? No problem. And this has got the uh, Heath Bar in it? Yeah. Oh, it's nothing but good, Ken. And what's your last flavor going to be? Well, probably this, because uh, we, we ran out of time. You open the Oreos. I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, we'll see if, who makes it, me or him. Okay. So, Steve, you can put the Oreos in there tomorrow with the stroll. Hmm? When the flavors meld a little bit more, this, this will be better tomorrow. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? Whoa! Yeah! You know what that ice cream needs after you eat it? The Joe Pesci walk. Huh? Caramel crunch, baby. I think Paul will want to have a little of this. Okay. Have you seen the big ice? Right, right here. I'll bring it to her. Okay, thank you. It shouldn't be that hard. It is. And slice it. That's the other perfect, way. so you can slide them right in. Yeah. Do you want me to cut it in half, though? Oh, I don't, well, it depends how far into the loaf you get. Are you going to cut the whole thing? I don't know. What would well, you, we'll see. How, what would you put into it? I don't have the recipe. I don't either. Well, what does this ice cream consist of? This. And cream. And vanilla. And that's it? Yeah. Ooh, you think you're gonna get enough flavor out of that? I don't know. I've never made it. I don't know. You know what? Throw some of my caramel crunch ice cream in there. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Whoa! That's your bucks. What? How about me? I make it every day. You can't eat it. You can't. You got to maintain yourself. Try this. It's a lot of work. Okay, what? Yes. Try that. No, that's caramel crunch. Yeah. Caramel crunch. Not the least. Everything's stainless steel. Oh my. Yeah, oh my. Oh my. Where's Crystal? Crystal, we're ready. Okay. Okay? Pretty good, isn't it? Oh. Ooh. Outstanding. Very good. Thank you. I'm shaking the table somewhere. Hey, Sammy would be on those Oreos. What happened? We were shaking the table so bad that. Uh, oh, with cutting it? You want vanilla. me to do it? I got it. Um, you I'm concerned that we won't have enough flavor in there. Well, we'll try it anyway. Nothing. I mean, it's a lot of cake. It's got to have flavor. It's not strong cake, though. Mm. I'll tell you what. Let me taste it. Yeah, by all means. If it's not going to work, then... No. No? No, you... Taste the piece. It doesn't have that pow flavor to it. It's a little subtle. Well, I've got nothing else, and it's easy enough to... It shows people how you can just dump stuff right in the machine. Or you want me to make the last one. Or you want to make the last one with this recipe. Yeah. Bag of that, bag of that, done. No, I was going to do this. Okay. I might as well do it. Okay. Is it going to grind up, though, because it's so frozen? Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll... it'll... Who? Yes. Yes. This and this. Okay. Let me take... I'll be right back. She's great, you know. Yes. Smart, too. And a gearhead. Oh, really? Yeah. What do I, label? I was just saying that you're a gearhead. Yeah. Hang on, we're just getting the rest of it out. What do I label it as? What do you what? Label it. As. Caramel crunch. Okay. Might caramel. as well. Well, caramel, okay. <laughs> not from New York, are you? Chris, no, she's not. In New York, it's no. caramel, caramel, right? Did you see his car? 
His car? Yeah. Uh -uh. The Volkswagen. I figured. Oh, you got to go out and look. Me. You got to see the wheels. Okay, you ready? <laughs> yes. Take it away whenever you want. Did you custom make those wheels, Jeff? Yes. Alrighty. I did them myself. Really? Wow, yeah. they're beautiful. Okay, let's talk about that ice cream. I know a bunch of you think too sweet, right? Who thinks it's too sweet? Not enough air? I think that's what we're coming up with here, too. Really? Not enough air? So it's very creamy and, and rich and... But will that change in a day from now when you deep freeze it? Yeah. Yeah, it will. Uh, I don't know if it'll change enough for his liking, but... Uh, it'll it'll be different, and you know what? Tomorrow it'll be colder, so it'll have less of that feel. Obviously, the, it's fresh out of the machine. I think it's superb, and I just told the guys uh, it's back on the menu in my store. It's been off the menu for several years, but a after I taste it, it's back on the menu. Now you can alter it, put less caramel in. You know, the more mixed, the fluffier it'll be. No, I didn't. But You'll still the setting, get the flavor. The setting on the machine to use. Well, we're at the maximum. If you do it any less, it's going to be denser. thicker, denser, mm -hmm. less air. But if you add less caramel. What if you ran it longer? Uh, I don't know. I think it's, it's ice cream when it's ice cream. But if you add less caramel, we added five cans, so maybe four cans. Don't forget, the more mix and the less dense caramel, the whippier it'll be. So that may be more to your liking. I'm keeping it the way it is. <laughs> that, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. Is it, what's the truth? They're not going to complain. Hmm? They're not going to complain about it. No, I think it's going to shoot up the board. Um, Well, Steve and I differ on this, and he's the guy who makes the machines. The question was, what's the smallest amount you can make in a 24? We differ on this because I've made small amounts. But he makes the machines, so he has recommendations. You make a 10 quart batch. See, I've made much less than that. But if you, if you tell people that they can, then they forget the timing. Drops well, down. that's your only concern, they, right? Yeah, because the timing's going to drop, and they're going to freeze the machine out. Only if they don't pay attention to what's going on. Right, but people don't pay attention. Because it'll be ready much quicker. So it'll be yeah. ready in three minutes. It, but if you, if you focus, remember focus, right? Jay? If you focus, if you focus, then it will make a smaller batch because the same process is happening. The cylinder's getting cold, the beaters are spinning, and the ice cream is freezing. It'll just take significantly less time and he's approaching this, rightly so, from a, uh, a mechanical standpoint, because most of you aren't the sharpest tools in the shed, so... I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> when you say 10 quarts, is that... 10 quarts finished. Finished. Okay. 10 quarts finished. So that means you can put 5 quarts in. 5 quarts. Yeah, 5 quarts. That would so be a better quarts, way to put it. 5 quarts max. That's a half a batch. That's a half a batch. Okay, now I'm pouring the mix in here. What's the name of this flavor? Stolen. What is it? Strollen. <laughs> I love to hear you struggle with that. Yeah. Stolen. Well, then you try saying acai. <laughs> <laughs> acai. It's a kai. Vanilla. Vanilla, how much? Um, how much? What size are you making? I'll take a squeeze cup. Uh, I've got uh, three and three quarter quarts in there. So give me four. We need some flavor in this. There you go. Okay, so we've got the mix. How much mix? Uh, I put four quarts in, and we've got the vanilla. Yeah, an ounce per quart. And we're going to start this quart. up. He doesn't pay for it. What does he care? I'm going to set this on super premium. Start that up. I don't waste any time. I get everything going. And now I'm going to feed these in.
Why do I feel like Vanna White? <laughs> this is the um, uh, stro stolen, stolen. stolen fruitcake. What'd you call me? I called you a fruitcake from Fruit Loops. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the one who moved to Fruit Loops. I gotta get it special. Because they're frozen, I'm gonna break them in half and see how that goes. That's easier. <laughs> I, I knew I had made it in the business world when a guy wrote and said, uh, because I used to entertain my kids with Sesame Street. We'd plunk them in front of the TV for hours watching Sesame Street. And this guy, it was Saturday, he had babysitting duty. He was a six-year-old and a three-year-old. And he went by, he, he would have them watching. It's got to be broken in half. He was watching the kids watch my videos of this. And this is when I knew I had made it in life because one, the six-year-old turns to the three-year-old and says, now don't try this with a tailor machine. And I thought, there we go. So he was right, don't try this with any other batteries. You won't be able to do it. You cannot put stuff in. They don't want to try in. it with this batch freezer either. It's working pretty good so far. We got to get a little voice that goes, feed me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going, it'll go. This part, you, this for decoration. No, I got tired. I'm hoping that it softens up in a minute. Okay. We'll take this back. I got it. Hold it. Let's get these yeah. flavor crumbs in there. Jeff was right about me and vanilla and the cost. I have no concept of cost. I fl this looked like a good idea, so I flew it in from Germany. <laughs> so I don't think it's too practical as a flavor. We'll see. But you know, you can always use uh, Aunt Josie's uh, fruit cake at Christmas and get the same concept. Because that's all this is, and it is just a fancy fruit cake. You know what you might want to add? What? A little cinnamon. I don't have any. You don't have cinnamon? No. Do you have any? Here we are. Cool. I think we should add a little cinnamon. Go for it. Yeah, definitely. Now you see how on the fly we're changing the recipe, we're adding cinnamon? Don't do what I do. When you do something like this and it comes out perfect, write down what you put in. Because otherwise it's batch number four and you go, now, what did I put in there, and how much did I do? And you completely forget, and you got to start all over again. Yes, question. You want to put sugar on it? I'm sorry? You want to put sugar in that? No, the sugar is in the dairy product. Okay. Yeah, it's already in there. Yes. No? Okay, well, we have potential there. Okay. All right, this is getting down to be your last chance to ask questions. So, uh, anybody? After this, I'll give you a quick tour of the yes. factory. I have a question about the vanilla one. You said that's 800 a gallon. No, no. I'm using Blockhead Natural Vanilla 103A. I think this is the best vanilla in the country. This is about $110. They have, they're, they're six, the they have pure vanilla. Now, what the difference is between natural vanilla and pure vanilla is, I have no clue, except that the pure vanilla is now uh, almost $600, and this is 110 This is what I use. It's natural, full vanilla. It's too full, two times as strong. So that's what I use, and I think it's fantastic. And what did you say you use, Jeff? He makes his own. <laughs> so if you've got the time to make your own and to bake your own strollin and to make your own Oreo cookies, you oh, know. Oh, come on. <laughs> making, making your own vanilla will bring you immense pleasure. You buy the beans from Doylestown on eBay, right? Uh, vanilla beans, grade A, what is it called? Planifora? Planophobia? Planet Hollywood? Something. Uh, Planet... Planet... 
buy the good beans on eBay, a place in Doylestown, right, Kelly? Doylestown. And uh, when you're, ma you know the little tiny dots in the ice cream that you, oh, that must be good ice cream. It's got little tiny dots in it. Score the bean and then spread it open. Take the other end of your knife and scrape the beans and then put that in your machine. It'll be a little slug of beans. Put it in your machine. It'll give you a 1,500,000 dots in your ice cream. But then the husk, instead of throwing the husk away, because it has no value to you, buy a cheap half gallon of vodka, $9.99, and put the beans in there. Spill off about two ounces and put bean stalks in there. And keep doing this, and then you'll have on your shelf the most wonderful vanilla you ever tasted. You'll be hesitant to use it in your customer's ice cream. You'll save it for your friends. It's that good. And just keep throwing beans in there. Uh, one of my bottles probably has 60 beans in there. You know, the pods from the beans. Some have 20, whatever. In a few days, the clear vodka will turn amber. And then a few days after that, a week later, it'll be dark, you can't see through it. And you get the dots from that too uh -huh. because you get, you know, the stuff in there. It's very good. Beans are expensive though. They went up in price too. But you, you're going to do it because you're going to have a shelf with your homemade vanilla on it. Why not? A 9.99 half gallon of vodka will give you a half gallon. Is that a gallon? Yeah, that's a gallon. That's a gallon. So it'll give you a half gallon for, I don't want to say free because you bought the, the beans, but you've used the, the, the part of the bean that you want to do. This is waste. You know what made this flavor great? What? You know what made this flavor great? What? The cinnamon. The cinnamon, yeah. <laughs> it needed something. Yeah, it's excellent. eBay. 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 Look up vanilla beans and find the one that's in Doylestown. You need a pen. There it is. Steve? Yes. Jay would like to know the difference in storing ice cream and ices, which by the way, this young man, no, this young man here, when I questioned him about what kind of store he's opening, what he's gonna sell, he said both, ice cream and ices. Little challenge there. The challenge is that Steve's gonna tell you the difference in temperatures. I'm gonna pull this now. Oh, okay. You're gonna to have to have freezers dedicated to your ices, freezers dedicated to your ices, serving freezers dedicated to your ices, serving freezers dedicated to your ice cream. You may not wanna to serve two masters. At the profit level of Italian ice, Go. I would have no problem. Oh, this baby's heavy. It's that stolen in it. <laughs> What are we going to call it? We're not calling it stolen. I don't know, because if I tell Paul I made stolen, how about, goes, you mean you got caught by the cops? How about cinnamon coffee cake? Cinnamon coffee cake. It's not a coffee cake. It's Who's a, to say? It's, it's a fruit ice cake. cream. It's a fruit cake. Oh, well, you don't want to call it fruit cake. How about we just call one of Steve's strange ice cream? Okay, here we go. Steve's strange ice cream. <laughs> As if you hadn't had enough, let's do it. Come on up and try it. You know, we we went uh, we went 100 percent today. No, we didn't. Every flavor was good. Well, I didn't make one. Well, I mean, everything you made was good. It was good, yeah, and everything you made was good. That's rare. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's we, like a first maybe timer. after 14 years, we're getting the hang of this. It definitely has a cakey taste. Yes, it does. So the bachelorette was three hours the other night. Did you watch the whole thing? Yes. 
Steve, you have been to Wikiwachi? I have not been there. It's just down the road. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. None for Paul? Paul's, Paul's tapping out. Paul's tapping out. Well, what do you think? Nope. <laughs> no comments. You want to try the Dresden Stolen? Huh? No. I got to do one for Mike. I think if this were fruitcake, like they give out at Christmas, it, it would be, be good. excellent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The cake fruit itself cake has a lot of flavor to it. This cake is bland. It's bland, but it's got potential for Christmas. Yes. yes. Maybe yes. for next Christmas we'll do a fruitcake. And everybody laughs the cinnamon. about everybody laughs about fruitcake. Will you give Christy one? Yeah, but try this first. <laughs> um, you have another one here. Two of the same thing? Yeah, same thing. And huh? we're going to call it... Uh, no, we're, we're done. We're out of time. We're tired. We're going to call it... That was a good uh, class. The guy wearing the red shirt, he says he's going home to get his wife. I said, can my wife come? I said, sure. He brings his two kids. Yes, it is. And then makes Christy babysitter. I hey, him, I didn't out. say that. Yeah, you know, I told him you can't do this. I said, get out. <laughs> the what? Yeah. yeah, stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be leaving yet now. Okay. Okay. Um, what, what time think, is it? What, what time think, is it? It's uh, 20 out, so we're done. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm all right. We're tired. What? We're tired. I'm not tired. You're not I, tired? I keep going, but that's all right. You can make another if you want. It's, no, you're, you don't want to do that because you got the tour coming. I think we got enough ice cream. Okay, okay. Uh, Steve? <laughs> what we, no, what do we name it before? Steve's Crazy Ice Cream? Okay, Steve's Crazy Ice Cream. I think it tastes like a cinnamon raisin. Okay, Steve, it's called, see what? Cinnamon raisin cake. We'll just call it that, cinnamon raisin. Okay, cinnamon raisin. Okay, cinnamon raisin. CRK. Save you on the writing. CRK? Cake is K? No, CRK. CRC. Oh, CRK? Okay. Huh? What day is this? Any more questions? Yes. Can we get back to the storing and serving? Oh, we're getting back to something. Yeah. Ice cream is stored at six degrees. Ice cream is served at six degrees Fahrenheit. In a hardening cabinet or a hardening room, it's taken down to 25 below zero. Uh, you need at least 10 below uh, in one of these cabinets to harden it. Um, as far as the ices, since I'm not using any chemicals, it's a 16 degrees serving temperature. So when you go to buy a... Uh, now, by the way, Joe, before he continues, and I want him to continue, that's not an exact science. No, not at all. You know, if, if he said 11 and you're at 7, 8, or 9, or 12, or 13, Don't it's worry. okay. Don't worry about it. Right. Don't fret over this stuff. This is more art than science. When you go to scoop it, if it's too soft, what are you going to do? Lower the temperature. Hello? Yes. If it's too hard, raise the temperature. Go ahead. I'm every, every event or every day is different, too, depending on your, your location. The humidity, yeah, the, the time of day, of course. How long something we've had the problem with the towel and ice where a kid will take it out and leave it out for too long. Yeah. Like, really? Oh, <laughs> you gotta, you got to keep on top of it. Yeah. Ain't anything else? The one that you're transferring to. So what did you like today? Let's think back. We had, we had amazing... Uh, lemon ices, like you get at the boardwalk. Yep. Then we had Bailey's, Bailey's cream ice. That was excellent. That was good. Then we went to all oh, the Ligonberry or whatever. That was very, that was good. Uh, then we went to caramel crunch, and then we went to the coffee cake, the fruit cake. <laughs> I don't mean you. I mean the. Uh, <laughs> I love the opportunity to create whatever you want. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Isn't it great? For me, the sky is the limit now. 
Like yeah, like what would happen if you took his cake recipe and added uh, a, a quart of sweetened cocoa? Yeah, yeah like, I was just going to say that. Chocolate yeah, coffee did. cake, uh, you know, it's it, you can't. It's and, and I hope you saw all saw that it's it's so simple to come up with recipes. It's mathematical. For it's Italian math. ices, That's you right. need, for Italian ices, you need a certain amount of sugar and water for it to actually freeze. And then flavor is uh, it's uh, according to Jeff, too much is never enough. Uh, but you can taste all these products as you're making it and say, well, I need to add a little more. So when someone says to me that they're going to experiment for three or four months on making their vanilla to make it perfect, uh, it's waste. just not necessary. Waste of time. Get a good vanilla and use more than anybody else, and it'll be spectacular. And here we had, we both tasted this cake and said there's not enough body to this to you know, Aunt Josie's fruit cake from Christmas, uh, which has more stuff in it. So Jeff said, let's fix it up with cinnamon. And that helped it dramatically. How much cinnamon? Uh, just a touch, see how it goes. And then taste it and see if you need to add more. Could have used more. Yeah, you can't add less once you put it in. <laughs> but it's really that simple. But write down what you did. Actually, you can add less. It, I've had you add stuff more mix. that... Add more mix, right. In the middle, if you go, whoa, <laughs> you know, when your hair stands up, add more mix and it'll temper it. Yeah. And then how do you know if you put too much in there, it just starts to like yeah, it? it. <laughs> do you like it? Yeah, because my staff sometimes might end up putting too much water. Your staff is told to follow this or they die. That's the bottom line. When you make this card, your staff is told this is what you do. I don't care if you taste it and you think it's no good. This is what you're going to do. Let me, let me put that same saying on my New York terms, and that is, this thing is bulletproof. It's, it's absolutely indestructible. But if they do something wrong to it, they put a blade in backwards, they freeze it up. You tell the, you tell the employee, you can't break it, and if you do, don't worry about it. We'll call Emory Thompson. They'll get us back up and running in minutes. But I need to know. Because if they do something to damage the and machine try to hide and, it. and hide yeah. it, and it affects the ice cream, gee, the lemon ice just doesn't taste the same. You know, I, don't, I can't imagine what you would do wrong. Tell the boss. And if I'm demonstrating, say, hey, boss, you're not going to fire him because he told you he just broke the machine. It's a machine. Well, we can fix it. But here's his three by five file card. You think the boss is a jerk. You think the boss needs to add more cinnamon or more vanilla. If you go messing, but this is the boss's formula. This has been in his family for 10 years. It's what people expect. Whether it's good or not is irrelevant. It's what people come in to buy. Now, if you the I then say, uh, employee, you change this recipe in any little bit whatsoever. Uh, don't bother telling the boss because we're coming to break your kneecaps and then we're going to drag you out in the street and we're going to shoot you. And I'm not being overbearing on that. Maybe we won't shoot you. Uh, but McDonald's is, a, in my opinion, a lousy hamburger. But it's the same lousy hamburger in Orlando, Florida, as it is in Moscow, as it is in, in Saipan. When you go through those golden arches, you know you're going to get the same consistency, lousy hamburger. And if you went there, that's what you want. That's fine. Uh, when I go visit Cape Cod and Four Seas Ice Cream, uh, I want to know that their mint chip, which is the best in the world, their mint chip tastes just the way I remember it three years ago. And that's because they stick to the formula. Here's the key right here. You tell the employee, break the machine, no big deal. You change this, you're fired on the spot because we can't afford, it's not because we don't like the guy or the lady, it's we can't afford inconsistency. And just for clarification, that place in Cape Cod, uh -huh. they make the second best mint chocolate chip. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right, I make the best. No, oh, no, right here. <laughs> oh yeah, if any, I used to struggle with this question, this is a little trivial, but um, people are always coming up to me, well, tell me honestly, who makes the best ice cream? It doesn't matter who I say, I'm gonna insult the rest of the world. So the only answer to that question is, who makes the best ice cream is, I make the best ice cream. Jeff's answer to the question, I make the best ice cream. And if you don't have that confidence in it, you better change your formula or go get out of the business because you have to have the confidence that you make the best you can. If you know that you're buying some cheap off-brand mix that's got a lot of chemicals in it and you know that you could buy better if you just spend a few dollars more, that's your fault. You know, you're not making the best because you know how to make the best. And you can also go to the supermarket. You can go to Walmart and buy Schmorios. 
or you can get Oreos. Used to be twelve dollars, seven dollars. What am I going to do? And there's a big difference. That's up to you. And there's a big difference. Schmorios or Oreos? <laughs> Schmemmems or Eminems? It's up to you. Flavors now. I saw um, carrot cake Oreos. Wow, I'd like to try that. I like this. <laughs> and you know, they're vegan. Yeah. I had no idea they're vegan. Mm -hmm. What a great excuse. And Fritos? Fritos are vegan. Crunch. You decide. And you know, when you buy the Walmart brand of M&M's, that ain't the same. You taste them, that ain't the same. Yeah. It's just not. All right, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the factory if you like. So if you'll all come with me, you can come back here and pick up your books. But we're done, and you've been a great audience, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, man. You know what?